Good evening. Welcome to the uh, regular meeting of the City of Birmingham Planning Board for Wednesday, September 25, 2019. Um, could we call the roll, please? Scott Klein. Robin Boyle. Here. Stuart Jeffries. Here. Mark Bert Kosek. Here. Daniel Scher. Here. Brian Williams. Present. Janelle Wobble Boyce. Here. Jason Emery. Here. Nassim Roman. Here. Sophia Trimble. Here. John Utley. Uh, the, the chairperson extends his apologies, but he is ill. Um, the uh, next item is uh, consideration and review and approval of the minutes of the regular meeting of this board that was held on September 11th. I got one. <clears throat> Mr. Mr. Jeffries has a um, comment. On the um, special land use permit and final site plan for... 117 Willets. Um, you know, we bring it up and then it just says there was no comment and then, then we voted. But there actually, I, I think it would be appropriate to have one line in there saying that the board was satisfied with the changes requested at the previous hearing or the previous meeting um, that they resolve their concerns versus, you know, with the uh, re looking at the uh, outdoor dining. Where is it in the minutes? Page. It's on page three, about the middle of the page. Okay. Good point. Any other comments? I, I, I feel left out if you didn't, so. <laughs> I wouldn't want to leave you out. Okay. Um, page two of the minutes, line five from the top. The word two, T-O-O, -O, is missing the lines. Mr. Ryan may be trying to do too much on the site. Right. Um, then on page three, of the minutes line three, I'm sorry, um, yeah, page three, line three, I think it's the August 14th meeting, not the August 11th meeting. Correct. Any other comments? So, Chair, will entertain a motion to approve the minutes with the uh, three suggested changes. So, motion by Mr. Chair, second by Mr. Jeffries. Any dis discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? No, no, just absent. I'm You're going to recuse? Recuse. Uh, yeah, I was not at that. All right, two recusals. Two abstentions. Yeah, Excuse me. Abstention is the word. Um, chairperson's comments. Uh, <clears throat> I want to ask Janet to explain, as, as I think uh, people who observe these meetings with some regularity know that we had tentatively a scheduled consideration of the um, initial draft of the master plan for tonight that is not on the agenda. Um, and I'd ask Janet to explain why. Yes. Um, originally, the thought process was that the consultant would appear before the City Commission on the 23rd, which was this past Monday, and then come here for the 25th with the first draft. Um, however, the draft, first off, wouldn't have given you enough time to read it. It's about yay thick. And so we thought it might be a better idea to have that draft sent out to you two weeks ahead of the joint meeting and to discuss it at the joint meeting when the commission and the planning board are all in the same room and that way we can have a little better discussion on it. And that meeting is uh, October... Thursday. Thursday, October 17th at uh, DPS, not at the... Well, and it may be moved to another location in yeah. light of the topic because it might be there might not be enough room at DPS. So okay. we're, we're contemplating another location, so stay tuned. So in any event, Thursday, October 17th. Correct. Okay. Hold on to check that date. Pardon October me? The 17th. October 17th, Thursday. An unusual night for a joint meeting. Right. Yes. But we've double-checked and triple-checked. Uh, I don't really have any other comments. We have two, uh, at least two major items on the agenda. And so uh, are there any other changes to the agenda, Jan? Uh, no. Okay. So the first item on item E1 is a special land use permit. There also is an item F1. Uh, with the board's permission, although we will uh, separately consider them by motion in uh, 
under advice of uh, Mr. Chair, uh, I would like to uh, consider them both at the same time for purposes of discussion. So item E1, 2159 East Lincoln, Lincoln Yard, former bus garage, both E1 and F1. Okay. Qu question. Uh, F1 is final site plan and design review. Yes. So what happens to preliminary? There was no preliminary one in this case because what happened, what the ordinance says is if there are not significant changes to a building that you can go directly to final, especially when there's already an existing building, then there's there was a final site plan already in place for that property, the site, the building, the parking, and so they're revising the final site plan because all they're doing is adding a very small addition to the back, and so the site, the building itself stays predominantly the same. So it's a judgment call. There's room in the ordinance for discretion as to whether it would warrant a preliminary or final. In this case, we felt it, war it warranted just a revised final. Not to say it doesn't require strict review, yeah. because there's it's a slough. Lots of site changes. There so are. There definitely so we'll are. consider that part of final. It's not it, like we're skipping we are absolutely and, uh, no building materials. We're still looking at site No, issues. we're looking at all of the issues together. Any changes to the site plan or Thank design. You. Thanks. Okay. The applicant is proposing a full-service restaurant at 2159 East Lincoln, titled Lincoln Yard. They have applied to renovate the existing vacant building into a 6,000 square foot space, including an independent fast casual restaurant and a dine-in restaurant, Lincoln Yard, serving American comfort food. Lincoln Yard will have 135 indoor seats and 73 outdoor seats. The independent fast casual restaurant, known as Little Yard, is proposed to connect to Lincoln Yard via sliding door and offer a carryout option. The applicant is seeking a special land use permit for the use of an economic development liquor license to engage in the sales and consumptions of alcohol on premise and to occupy a building more than 6,000 square feet in the MX zone. At this time, the subject property is not within the boundaries identified in the zoning ordinance to qualify for an economic development liquor license, though the applicant has applied for a zoning amendment to have this property added as a qualifying property. On September 11th, the planning board considered the application to amend the zoning ordinance to include 2159 East Lincoln Street as a property eligible for an economic development liquor license. The planning board considered the intent of the economic development Development license, the goals of the Eaton Road corridor plan, and the current conditions of the southern portion of the rail district. And based upon review, the planning board motions to recommend that 2159 East Lincoln Street, as well as the surrounding properties on East Lincoln Street and Cole Street in the southern portion of the rail district, uh, be included as properties eligible for an economic development license. The reason for this recommendation of additional properties is that the planning board wanted to consider consider the southern portion of the rail district as a whole uh, and not just one property at a time. The planning board felt that the entire southern portion of the rail district could benefit from substantial investment opportunities. Uh, the subject property still must receive final approval from City Commission to be added to Appendix C, Exhibit 1 of the Zoning Ordinance, in order to be eligible for this Economic Development License SLUP. Uh, principal uses in the MX with floor areas more than 6,000 feet must also apply for a special land use permit. Uh, in regards to the land use zoning and surrounding areas, uh, the areas to the north, the east, and the west are surrounded by commercial, retail, industrial, Meanwhile, to the south, you have a mostly public space. Uh, it's active recreation area with an ice rink, uh, tennis courts, baseball field, and further to the east is a private swim club. Uh, in regards to the economic development liquor license use, uh, if the applicant is successful in having the property approved as an area qualifying for economic development liquor license, the applicant must satisfy requirements of the Municipal Code Chapter 10, Alcoholic Liquors, Article 2, Division 3, Licenses for Economic Development in order to qualify for approval. Uh, this section states that the purpose of this division is to establish a policy and condition Conditions to allow City Commission the ability to approve a request to transfer liquor license into the city in excess of the city's quota licenses if the request is deemed to constitute a substantial economic development and benefit to the city. Uh, meanwhile, 
chapter 10.61 outlines criteria they must satisfy for uh, an economic development license. Uh, in regards to number two, uh, an operations floor plan has yet to be submitted. Uh, though the applicant has indicated the hours of operation for the carryout will be from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. in Little Yard, while Lincoln Yard will be open from 11 a.m. to 12 a.m. daily. Uh, the applicant has yet to provide the city with information regarding the type of liquor license they intend to transfer into the city, uh, who owns said license, who it was purchased from, and whether it is accompanied by any endorsements. Uh, in regards to requirement number Number three, uh, which is an economic uh, an economic impact analysis from the applicant. Uh, they've indicated the number of permanent new jobs created to be 85 to 95, that the number of temporary contraction and trade jobs will be around 40 to 50. Uh, construction will primarily be provided by trades who live within 20 to 30 miles of the site. The applicant has also indicated that total investments in the project will be approximately $3 million, uh, and they anticipate the increase in assessment value to be from five to ten times the current estimate of assessed value. Uh, in regards to requirement five, um, at this point the applicant has not submitted anything to the Michigan Liquor Control Commission and are awaiting SLUP approval. And in regards to requirement six, the applicant is in good standing with the Michigan Liquor uh, Control Commission. And in regards to the second part of number six, which is what the city deems to constitute a substantial economic development and benefit to the city, which is a 500% increase in assessed value or an investment of $10 million. Uh, the applicant has indicated they'll be investing uh, $3 million in design, engineering, and construction of the interior, and that the property records show a current assessment of $182,000. Uh, and considering the investment of approximately three million, the applicant is anticipating around an 820 percent increase in assessed value. Uh, in regards to requirement seven, uh, Lincoln Yard states uh, they will complement the vibrant dining scene of Birmingham, and that Lincoln Yard will fill in some of the gaps for restaurant and food service in the southern portion of the rail district. And so. In regarding to number six, what the city deems to be a substantial economic development, it's of note that the last sentence of Municipal Code 10-616 states, however, special circumstances may warrant flexibility on the minimum investment at the sole discretion of the city commission uh, when evaluating the 500% increase from the current assessed value of $182,000, uh, the required assessed value post-development would have to be $913,000. Uh, according to Oakland County assessing data, the owners and applicants purchased this property in 2016 for $825,000. Uh, property was in poor condition at the time, and the approximate $3 million of investments intended for improvements have yet to be made. Comparable uses nearby in the rail district include the reserve, which is a banquet hall around $783,000 assessment, the Big Rock Chop House, uh, assessed at around $1.1 million, and and Griffin Claw, a 15,000 square foot brewery assessed at 1.5 million. Uh, these restaurants are not exactly like what is proposed at Lincoln Yard, but may provide a gauge of how establishments with liquor licenses are assessed within uh, this portion of the city. Uh, it's also of note that the metrics used to determine substantial economic development uh, only consider the individual property. Uh, these metrics of improvement did not take into account or consideration the uh, catalytic benefits of one project and how that affects its surrounding area. Um, and so when reviewing the application for this for this property to be eligible for an economic development license, the planning board discussed the positive impacts um, a full service restaurant would have on all of the properties within the southern portion of the rail district. Uh, they wanted to look at the area as a whole and not just one at a time. And so in regards to the municipal code 10-262, um, criteria for liquor license requests, the applicant has indicated bank financing necessary for this project is already in place. Uh, they 
have not previously operated in Birmingham, though they intend to officially respond to any concerns from citizens and board members. Uh, the applicant believes their service to residential, recreational, business neighborhoods will help and redevelop that parts of the area. And the applicant has indicated that they build restaurants with good bars, not bars that serve some food. And they indicate Lincoln Yard will be 75% food and 25% alcohol and there are no, no known outstanding obligations to the city. Oh, let me flip to setback requirements. The applicant is in good standing in terms of setbacks. Um, here we are. Setbacks and screening. They're, provide, they're uh, indicating some sprinter boxwoods for um, screening along the parking, um, their dumpster screening, they've satisfied these portions. Uh, we went over this in their, their previous review, uh, which was postponed at the time. Uh, as of now, they meet all their screening and landscaping requirements. Uh, in regards to parking, access, and circulation, they're, provide, they're required to provide 65 spaces, and they have 58 on-site spaces, and they have indicated a shared parking agreement with their neighbors, 2125 East Lincoln, which is Armstrong White. Uh, the parking agreement is attached along with the agenda. Uh, the property at Armstrong White, 2125, is required to have 32 spaces. Meanwhile, they have 60, uh, which is an excess of 28. Therefore, the planning department does not uh, recommend a park peak parking study for the shared parking agreement. Uh, in regards to pedestrian access and circulation, it was brought up at the last meeting. Um, if they could kind of highlight um, the area crossing from the sidewalk to the restaurant and the applicant has responded by providing details indicating kind of a reddish tint, tinted concrete. I lost my spot. Here we go. Over here. And it's fading out on me. Here we go. And for streetscape, the applicant has indicated uh, two benches and two trash cans. Uh, they're city standard, but the applicant must indicate that they'll be uh, Birmingham green or what color they want it. In regards to lighting, the applicant has uh, indicated a number of uh, number of different types of lights, but according to Birmingham's rules, uh, lights must be full cutoff luminaires. Um, these yellow bulbs here would not be full cutoff luminaires, though Article 4.21D1 states that exceptions to cutoff luminaires can be made at the discretion of the planning board, for instance, if it aligns with the designs of the master plan, if these lights are not obtrusive nor distracting, uh, and cases like that, if it satisfies an aesthetic design that they uh, find nice. In terms of uh, for design review, um, the applicant will be adding 1,104 square feet. Uh, the south facing patio will have a canopy constructed of corrugated blue metal panels along here uh, and a white acrylic patio cover. The patio seating will be surrounded by planters made of wood and court and steel. Uh, the building exterior is proposed to remain concrete masonry, painted white with a blue stripe through it. And in regards to outdoor dining, the applicant uh, has not yet indicated where the, uh, the garbage cans or the refuse containers for the seating will be um, out here. Uh, also, the applicant has indicated that um, four different types of chairs are made out of plastic that comes in white, orange, Bordeaux, or red ochre. Um, then in regards to glazing, the applicant has indicated that their glazing for the first floor is 45%. Meanwhile, the zoning ordinance requirements um, or requires a 70% glazing factor. Um, though a new section of the ordinances was adopted two years ago, um, states that the planning board can wish a certain amount of flexibility if they find if the design meets the intents of the master plan and certain design aesthetics. 
Then in regards to signage, the applicant has indicated a Lincoln Yard sign, a Little Yard sign, and below the Little Yard sign they say everyday takeaway. Uh, the applicant has not yet provided specs on that portion of the sign, uh, although currently they're within good standing in regards to the square footage allowed for the signage. Uh, the applicant does have to indicate how the sign will be attached to the wall. Uh, and with that, I leave it to Planning Board. Okay, thank you. Uh, I just wanted to clarify at least one comment. Um, I, I, at, at the last meeting, um, and as reflected in the minutes, uh, initially uh, there was a consideration of a proposal only to include this site uh, in recommending to the City Commission, and that was changed. So, so really what's recommended is an area, as shown on the map. Uh, which uh, I think Janet can pull up. Uh, but this specific site was not recommended. Uh, the area was. Now this site is included within the area, but I think um, there was no specific reference in the motion that was passed and the resolution that's been forwarded to the City Commission to this specific site. Janet, can I ask you also, what uh, has the City Commission done thus far, if anything, with respect to um, <clears throat> the consideration of expanding the economic development license geographical footprint? Um, yes, they have not at this time actually voted on that or even set a public hearing. It will go on October 7th to set a public hearing uh, for the hearing on the matter as to whether or not this property would be included in the boundaries of the Economic Development District. I am about to pull up the map here um, that you're referring to, which was what you talked about at the last meeting. Right now we do allow economic development licenses on certain properties that are located on a map, but only the, most of them are along the Woodward Corridor. So what we're talking about here, let me get this a little larger, that we were talking about at the last meeting, these are the ones that are currently within the economic development area. And as you know, we talked about at the planning board adding either just this parcel or adding a section of the southern end of the rail district to the economic development map, which would allow it to qualify for such a license. And this was recommended for approval by the planning board. It has not gone to the commission. It is required to go okay. to the commission for a public hearing and approval by them first before any such application as the one tonight could possibly be approved for special land use. The streets principally affected are the north Our side of Lincoln and Cole Street. North side of Lincoln and Cole all the way to the end, yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, before we get too far along in the discussion, I think a little housekeeping. There are two um, emails, copies that the board has in its package, which were not part of our materials. So the chair would entertain a motion to receive and file an email from Alicia Barash or Barack, dated Wednesday, September 11th, and uh, a second email uh, from a Sarah Winkler uh, from Monday, September 23rd. Uh, both uh, emails generally support the proposed Lincoln Yard restaurant site. So I entertain a motion to receive and file these two emails. So moved. Support. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Okay, board. Daniel? So I have uh, I've read with some care the cross parking agreement um, that's referred to both in the materials and the presentation, and I've got some concerns about it. I also went to the site this morning, and that height heightened my concerns. So um, the it's not it, I guess it is a shared parking agreement, but what surprised me about it, one of the things that surprised me, is that it's an agreement by which both properties have parking rights on the other property. I had understood, incorrectly, that it was an agreement which allowed the Lincoln Yard site to park on the office site, but it's actually a mutual 16-space site. The, it also grants the owners of each property to relocate driveways. Um, and grants access as well as parking. The relocation of driveways is, of course, a problem because it affects the flow of traffic both on our site and 
off off this site. The, the grant of parking on the Lincoln Yard property begins at 5 p.m. on weekdays and includes all weekends. These restaurants are going to be open from, well, one from 7 in the morning and one from 11 in the morning. So if you deduct the potentially 16 spaces, which happen to be marked in the south side of the Lincoln Yard site, closer to Lincoln, um, you're you know, down to 42 spaces on site in, spa in, in um, comparison to the uh, 58 that are shown on the map. Um, additionally, you know, I had originally, oh, and then it's got a 10 year term, which is hopefully, if this restaurant gets off the ground, less than the um, time that the restaurant will be operating and successful. So some of these things, I think, can be handled by uh, provisions in the slop that requires them to, rem to main maintain uh, the agreement in effect. But the right to park on Lincoln Yard site and the time limitations are troublesome just by their terms alone. But when I went there this morning at 1020, there were four vacant parking spots on the, par on the office site on the east part of the, that parking lot. So unless something special was going on that caused more than usual, if that's a typical condition, when it comes time for lunchtime, there's not going to be 16 spaces available. And I'm concerned that there won't be enough parking at lunchtime. It is an issue, obviously, after 5, because I think the office building would be vacant. But um, you know, I'm not sure that we shouldn't do a peak parking demand study around noontime, but also any approval uh, ought to be dependent on, in my view, not sharing parking on the 2159 site. That it has to start when the property is open for business as opposed to at 5 p.m. on weekdays. Um, and a couple of conditions concerning the uh, being included in the slide in terms of not relocating and having. Term, you know, term that continues. And then there are just two other minor things, which is the address for the office building in that cross parking agreement is incorrect. They have 2525 instead of 2125. And the document we have is not recorded. Whatever is approved is going to need to be recorded so that subsequent owners are bound. Thank you. Uh, additional comments? <coughs> this uh, pales in comparison to Mr. Shear's. But um, a couple things. Um, one, the uh, benches that we put in the park, and the ice rink that was just recently when they did Lincoln Road, are different than the ones they're proposing. The ones they're proposing, though, are the ones you see typically around town, and are the ones is the one that's in front of Armstrong White. Um, bike rack, which is on their property though, it looks like all the ones that we put in there is our other model of the upside down U. As a avid bike rider, I can tell you both of them are beautiful sculpture and horrible bike racks. Um, but at any rate, I don't know if we would want to have that consistency. And then the last thing I'll just point out is this project goes forward. We will have developers put have put in 22 city standard lamp posts on that street, and on the other side of the street, the city has put in zero. <laughs> and we say we don't have any money, but we've lowered our tax rate five years in a row. So that's my commentary. Okay, Brooks, uh, can you tell us about the? Um city parking lot for the tennis and the ice rink um, across the street and um, is that available to anyone to use or is that just for users of the park or how, how does that work and is that a possibility for um, some parking <coughs> for them if they want to 
to mm -hmm. be there. Public parking and there's no meters to it. Uh, I don't believe there's any hourly restriction, say no parking after 10 p.m. that I've heard of. And so I know that hockey games go late into the night for men's leagues. So. Do we know how full it is at any given time? Uh, I have not done the counts. I know that I've never seen it fully occupied. Never been to a little league game then. <laughs> <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Uh, other comments? Bert, have any? Um, uh, I have one comment which I'll make. Uh, I don't want to blind somebody, blindside somebody at the end of the meeting, so I'll make my comment. I, I, I totally agree with the comments that Mr. Sher has made about the shared parking agreement. I share almost all of those considerations, although I didn't review it as carefully as he did. I, I do think a study is in order in light of the concerns he's raised. More importantly, um, um, as most of you know, I'm, I'm big on process um, and, and things we've done in the past. Um, I, I, I like the project. I don't like the timing. Um, the City Commission has yet to consider whether uh, this specific project, let alone the entire area that we recommended, would be included within permitted economic development license. We have avoided, I'll cite the example of Mountain King, of not looking at specific projects uh, pending rezoning approval, in this case uh, amending our ordinances to allow this type of development in this particular area. Um, and I think it's presumptive on our part to not only recommend an area, but also to recommend a specific site within that area. Um, because I simply don't know what the city commission is going to do or what their feelings are about, um, frankly, competition in the area uh, once the, if the area, not once, if the area is opened up to economic development licenses. So uh, I'm not opposed to the project. I'm opposed to the timing. I will not vote in favor of this project tonight, uh, notwithstanding the fact that a lot of the neighbors want it. Process is important. Uh, and I, I don't like our process. I, I frankly like the process we followed on the proposed Mountain King site where we looked at the zoning issue alone without specifics to a project. Um, now that is still not done, but um, we have yet to get to a specific project on that years later. But I think that is the appropriate way to go. It's the way we have gone in the past. I see no reason to deviate in this instance. Uh, would the developer like to comment, uh, the applicant like to comment on the concerns about that have been raised about the shared parking arrangement and any other uh, items that you'd like to bring to the planning board's attention? State your name for the record and your company or address? Yes, sir. I'm uh, Kurt Catello from Union Joints. Uh, I'm here tonight with uh, co-owners Ann Stevenson, who's our lead designer, and Eric Lines. Uh, Matt Leone is our lead project manager. We also have Tony Yergo, who's our project manager for this undertaking. And then we have Jeff Klatt from Krieger Klatt. Uh, Catherine Abood from Armstrong White, our neighbors who have uh, agreed to the parking agreement, is also in attendance on our behalf and to answer any questions. And I'd just like to start by saying uh, uh, my thanks to Brooks and Jana for all of the work that they've done in distilling this process down for your digestion. Uh, it's a complicated process for us. We're operator developers, but even that being said, uh, for, for them to kind of distill all of these uh, articles of our application into something that we could understand and that could be shared with you is much appreciated. So thank you for that. As you may recall, we appeared before you um, a couple of years ago with the same project essentially. This is a downscaled version of that project. Ironically, it's downscaled because we aren't going after a bistro license. If you recall, originally we had these shipping containers on the roof and we we're activating the rooftop for a, to make the most of the season, to uh, accommodate a business plan that didn't allow us to have interior seating to the uh, degree that we're accustomed to. 
Um, that being said, we like where we ended up. As you recall, when I appeared before you in that courtesy review um, a month or so ago, this is one of those uh, instances where we're glad that it took a little longer because we're happier with where we ended up. That being said, um, I think that uh, uh, the parking concerns are uh, valid always, but I do wish that we had heard those maybe the first time around or three years ago because we definitely would have had a parking study in hand for you tonight. Uh, if that's something that was wanted, we would have been more than happy to deliver that, and we absolutely understand why you'd want it. Uh, we do think that Armstrong White is being very neighborly to uh, offer this parking agreement. Uh, it's definitely something that they don't have to do. There's no gain in it for them, except that we're providing a service to their uh, designers and uh, programmers, and that we're giving them a place to walk over for lunch or dinner. Uh, and then we've also been talking to Don Bailey, who owns the property on the other side. Uh, and that's really about looking at what he's activating on that building to make sure that we have walkability, because that's something that we want to foster, and we understand that it was something that the Planning Commission was looking to foster in that whole corridor. Uh, that being said, um, the project that we brought for the SLUP is uh, an economic development opportunity because it's going to take that much money. This is a true development. And I think typically if somebody were to come in, they'd probably propose tearing down a cinder block building, tearing down a bus garage, and building some structure that would be more economically uh, compassionate for a bank, uh, easier to undertake, and they'd probably have a restaurant on the first floor of a five-story building, and they'd have the similar uh, headwinds that you face in any development. We're not about that. What excites us is the opportunity to repurpose a building that's always been there, to give the neighborhood something in this same footprint that they don't already have in that area, which is a restaurant that services everybody, that is uh, enhanced for walkability, bike racks that should work better than those hoop bike racks so that people can ride their bikes in whether they're showing up to bus, showing up to eat, or showing up to grab something before a hockey game across the street. These are the things that we're proud to, to do in this footprint. And we understand that the parking concern is uh, a serious one. And one of the things that we learned long ago is that we'll never do another project that doesn't have parking sussed because <laughs> life is just too short. And it's, it's easier to address at the onset than to open and then try to address a problem. That's a fact. Uh, that's why the, one of the first things we did was talk to Armstrong White at the very uh, onset to determine if there was was this kind of collaborative parking opportunity. And the hours do align with our needs in that we're really, when you talk about lunch or the grab and go of Little Yard, this is really quick service. It's people coming in, grabbing something, getting into a car and leaving. They might be showing up on a bike, they might be grabbing it to go across the street before a skating lesson. And at night it's a different story where people are coming for, they have more than an hour for lunch. What's complimentary about this agreement is that that's when the Armstrong White lot is fully available. What's great about it is that on the weekends, you know, their designers might come in for a project or two, but they never fill the lot. And I just think that there's an opportunity for us to kind of um, make the most of our property and their property, but it has to be uh, reciprocal. I mean, I, I don't think that for us just to say, we want to have access to your lot and in return, um, you wouldn't have access to ours is um, I think it's us just being a little greedy as operators that being said I don't think that Armstrong White needs our lot you know they they have a viable um, very bustling business right now where they don't use any spaces beyond their footprint and I think that uh, our goal is to make the most of what we have uh, hopefully have people that are already parked in their place coming to lunch regardless. We want people to come uh, to lunch that park their car at Armstrong White at 8 in the morning because that's where they work. We want people to use the municipal lot because they're there for a tennis lesson and then they're going to walk across the street on the clearly delineated red tint concrete uh, to take advantage of this. But uh, to um, Commission Member Shear, I absolutely uh, agree that parking is it's vital. It's, it's our lifeblood, and we understand your concerns. Uh, I also want to say that it's a little different in that we have 
on site 42 times more spots than any place I could walk to for dinner after this meeting, uh, which is a good problem to have. Uh, and I always say that I spend half of my day uh, trying to create a parking problem and the other half trying to solve it. Uh, in this case, we really front-loaded that by having a parking agreement, having a uh, restaurant proposal in an area that has really attractive walkability, and uh, more importantly, having such vibrant on-site parking. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Did you want to make comments? No. Unless you have any questions, you're more than happy to answer. Before we go any further, Brooks, let's just make sure we know what we're talking about here. According to the minutes, according to the tier we have in front of us, the parking required for this development numbers <coughs> 65. <coughs> according to the information in front of me, they are proposing 58 on site. Am I right or am I wrong? I believe that's my flip to my parking page. I may be misreading it, but I just want to make sure that we know what we're talking about. Correct. Required 65, proposed 58 on site. Now, is that including the shared, or is that what's on their site, excluding Armstrong White? Excluding Armstrong White. It's fine. Okay. But it, it, it's included within the area that's available for shared parking by Armstrong White, correct? The reciprocal portion of this. No, I think that the numbers that you're talking about are um, are without calculating Armstrong White, but they are calculating the available street parking, which can be applied to your parking calculations. Is that correct? Correct. Yes. Oh, I'm confused. Let's go back. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I wanted to capture right away. I'm confused as well. So, how, how many street sites? Could we? Could we fifty-eight. How many street sites and how many off the street? There's nine parking spaces on the street in front of the building. Jeff Clatt, Krieger Clatt Architects. Thank you. So you have 58 parking spaces on site, 16 parking spaces through shared parking, and nine on the street. But nine is part of the 58. Is nine part of the 58? It would be 49 on site, yeah. nine street, 58 total. So the next question would be, when, when, you, when we have to determine whether or not a plan meets the ordinance, if the on-site <coughs> spaces are available for an adjacent property to park on, are they deducted? Did you hear the question? <laughs> no, but I, had, I, I saw that yeah. look that I should have. Okay, so <laughs> All right, so let's review for Jana's case. Uh, it, there are 58 parking spaces on site, 49 on site, 9 on the street. On Lincoln Yard or Armstrong White? Lincoln no, Lincoln Yard. Lincoln Lincoln Yard. Yard. Okay. Just stay with Lincoln Yard. There's yeah. an additional 16 parking spaces through a shared parking arrangement. Um, but the shared parking arrangement is reciprocal. So the question is, to the extent that Armstrong White has rights to parking on Lincoln Yard site, do you deduct the spaces that, that Armstrong White has re reciprocal rights to from the total? No. You add up the requirements for Lincoln Yard and you add up the requirements for Armstrong White, and together that number has to equal or exceed the number on the two sites. Oh. And it does because uh, Armstrong White is significantly overparked in accordance with the ordinance now. So there is no need for them to get a shared parking agreement put in place because they actually have enough parking on the two sites. Not, that to, not saying that your concerns aren't valid, you know, because there might be different times uh, when, when it will be busier than others, but for the most part, an office use as well as a restaurant use has differing hours. So you're saying under the ordinance... Under the ordinance. Under the ordinance, we do not deduct in this situation the spaces that may be reciprocally available to Correct. Armstrong White. Correct. Okay. 
and, if, and that was the Q and A. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and if I can add, my 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 reading of this and understanding of it would be that we are, in effect, uh, looking at seven. I hate to say this, we're starting a conversation about a $3 million restaurant on the basis of seven parking spaces. We're, we're digging our own grave. Now, I appreciate the comments about process, but if our process drives us to take this development on the basis of seven parking spaces no, in an area which is filled with parking, we're not doing ourselves. We're, we're not doing our Robin, job. I think we're you're, simply not I, doing our I job. I have to simply say, I think you're overreaching. The well, comment I, I, was, we're, excuse we're, me. We, we are overreaching at seven parking spaces. No, no. Let me say, I think the, the question was asked, what, what is the meaning under the ordinance of the reciprocal arrangement? We now have an answer, and I think the concerns are lessened. But you didn't know the answer either. Agreed. So that's my rebuttal to your... Well, I think that there's still, first of all, I, I will say I apologize for not looking carefully at that cross easement sooner. I know it's been on the table for quite a while, and, you know, I should have done it. Sorry about that. Um, but here we are. And so, you know, I, I think you know, it's a solve. I, I still think a study is relevant just because when I was there today, there weren't extra spaces, or I shouldn't say there weren't, there were four extra spaces. You know, at a time that potentially conflicts. Notwithstanding that office buildings are empty by and large after five, they're not empty at one, two. Um, having said that, you know, there are the there is no right under the current agreement for Lincoln Yard to park on the adjacent property during the daytime. So I think that's something that needs to be corrected. So there, you know, there are some conditions that we might, you know, put into some approval motion, but I, I remain uncomfortable about the capacity, you know, over there, because I have no idea if the condition I saw today is a typical condition or an atypical condition. Well, I will say you can attach whatever conditions you like to a special land use permit, and, and I would like to remind you that we did do a parking study over in the rail district, what, two years ago? Mm -hmm. Plenty of parking. There are 2,483 2, parking spaces in the rail district that are available at any given time. Not to say that, you know, there aren't different peak times and such, but there is also the par public parking lot across the street. So the, the end result of that study was there is an abundance of parking in the rail district, especially in the south end of the rail district. Yes. Stuart? Um, so I was going to bring that up, but it's been brought up on the traffic study. We have done one, so to ask somebody to do another one, I mean, we have a good idea of it. I'm going to take this from not a strict ordinance standpoint, but more of a sniff test. Um, I drive by there all the time. I've never seen a lot overflow, but you can't police it. Maybe they had a small conference. Maybe they had a bunch of people in town. You know, you never know. But across the street, there's an, when I went a couple days ago, there was an ice rink there wasn't one car in because if you think about it if our concern is this lunch hour you know 11 to 2 or 3 or whatever during the week during school that ice rink is empty there's nobody there that lot sitting there when the school's not in session the ice is melted and they put in six pickleball courts clearly not going to fill the lot up again in the middle of the day um we're also, this establishment is, has every look and feel of a neighborhood business. We're getting letters from people who want to walk over there. The density of that area, I think you're going to have a significant <coughs> number of people, much like a downtown, because you have the largest neighborhood over there, uh, density-wise, right at its back door. And so, I don't know. When every, every little thing I look at, th this passes the sniff test. I think we just need to figure out a way to... Get comfortable and, and, and go because to Raman's point, yeah, three million dollars and and the place we have the most parking probably in the whole much city. We're going to trip up over seven spots. I think it'll be a mistake. I just whenever we do this, I'm always confused. So we are so we're dealing with a special land use permit. <clears throat> Preliminary, we've lumped with final, even though I think there are a lot of site 
everything so far has been about the site plan and parking um, and the even the language here ties it to an economic <coughs> license which goes back to your point that we don't even have any control over so so I mean just a you know I, I I'm in favor of the project let me just say that I have some concerns about the site and we haven't even talked about the architecture so at what point do we jump into that jump jump um, okay so nobody's gonna make a presentation beyond what Brooks did about the site is that correct nobody from the is I'm fine with that I'm just I'm just asking so I mean nobody's gotten into the site presented the site the architecture of the building the thinking behind it it's all kind of lumped together but my fundamental concern and let me see if we can pull up the combined site plan and it's an easy fix um, at least for me it's an easy fix um, and again I you know I will I will be a patron um, if I can get into the place because it's going to be busy we know that right so I'll go to the composite site plan is that sheet 40 page 40, 40. Page 40? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm getting there, so I'm Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right, Bear. So, I mean, I stop. In this district, there are, I'm going to say, 30 buildings, and most of them front on the street because they have for the last 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 years, whatever. Um, some don't, like all your lumber does in the auto place, but people don't typically walk there or show up on a bike. Um, if you look at the other restaurants here, if I look at Griffin Claw or um, what's it called, the uh, railroad, the Whistle Stop. Whistle Thank you, Whistle Stop. Um, you know, I, I sidewalk. I can park my bike. I can walk up there. I can go in the front door. So you're you didn't put this building where it is. It's been there, and I, and I think it's cool that you're keeping the building and working with it. But I look at are there ways to improve upon the site design to create that more connectability and this this building um, I think you're gonna have a lot of pedestrians come in here from across the street from down the street from the neighborhood um, quite a few so is there anything that can be done to create a a more of a physical connection without moving the building because you can't can't move the building so I look at zoom in on the site plan to the right side of the site plan so this part yeah so i guess if i were doing it i would be doing it through hardscape landscape things that create a linkage from the sidewalk to your building mm -hmm. so you have on the far in the southeast corner you have a large landscape zone there um i know i can i, I if i could steal a car from um, how do I want to describe this? Uh, where you have your pedestrian link, yeah. and by the way, tinted concrete or whatever, it's, look at when they paint stripes on the road, it's good for a year and then it has to be redone. So it's, it, it doesn't have a real strong physical visual link. Mm -hmm. I think there are better ways. If you look at the train station that was unfortunately done in Troy, not Birmingham, but there's a, the pavement rises up and back down again and you, you you sense with a car, I'm gonna call it a speed bump, yeah. that it's pedestrian dominant yeah. and vehicles slow down. So can you make that, I think you can make that kind of connection that says, be careful, this is more pedestrian yeah. dominant. But So if I could take, I'm gonna steal a parking space where you have a tree uh, to the southeast right there below. So I'm gonna put a parking space there and I'm going to take that landscape that 200 square feet or 250 square feet and I'm going to push it over to where, where number 11 is uh, the parking space the Berry Free Park space and shove that down so now I've created more of a physical landscape hardscape link do you follow what I'm yep. saying so just make kind of a uh, uh, green belt delineation yeah, in, instead of I'm going to try to zoom in here a grander you, entrance for pedestrians yep. right but right now you have uh and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to pull this up. So you have 19.4 feet of landscape hardscape yep. that connects. That could be 
32 foot, 33 feet or something. Gotcha. So I think everybody would benefit. Nobody cares where that tree is. Yeah, those are definitely, that's that's compliance landscaping, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. But but make it work for you. Just compliance, you got to do that, but make yeah. it, you know, where the, where the link is. So, yeah. And then I look at your, your curb cut. Why doesn't your curb cut, initially I thought, why doesn't it line up with your drive? Uh, I'm going to say that we're to leveraging the existing curb cut uh, to a point. But, um, yeah, I looked at an era photograph. I didn't know if that was right or not. Yeah. So. And uh, to your point, like I, I definitely, it's always in a restaurant's best interest to mark its entrance. So I agree that if there's a way to make this... Uh, entrance a little more prominent through landscape uh, why not it definitely works and I agree that um, we just poured a bunch of red tint concrete at our Clarkson campus and uh, it's too fresh to know how right. long it lasts it's great in California yeah when you're not just putting not salt so on it but so, uh, so let me just keep going with my comments so so if you could increase that sort of peninsula you could probably get that sidewalk even to line up with your front entrance to the building gotcha. now it's sort of offset and and I, I I you know saving a curb cut or using curb cut probably saves some money, right? Is that why you were trying to do it? But if you looked at a like pan out a little bit, it doesn't. Um, I would almost put the curb cut it so it aligns it with the easternmost drive yeah. aisle, where I just took that tree away. And let me tell you, it does a couple things. One is when cars are coming in. Where it's currently proposed, somebody's going to make a. Now I have to make a right or left hand turn. I have to sort of think. Yeah. And you've got lots of pedestrians who are up passing through that area. So if I could pull that drive to the east, it pulls it away from where you have that pedestrian linkage back to the sidewalk. I think people will inherently slow down. And then if I'm the guy that's got to pick up your trash, if you pan up a little bit, I've got a straight shot in to get to your dumpster instead of maneuvering through the parking lot. So these are, I'm going to call them tweaks. Yep. Um, I think they're easy to do. I'd love to see, I, I, I like that architectural element that you're creating, that porch across the front. You know, could a little bit of that occur in this, in this um, sort of entryway at the sidewalk with some lighting and put a bench where someone will actually use it as opposed to, you know, again, just complying with the ordinance and putting it where back in that zone you know it'll get used if you can put it in front of your entrance so yep. anything that you could do again you're going to be busy i think this could be even a cool place to hang out a little bit um you know brand yourself right there at that yep. street and i uh and i'll have to look because i want to make sure that 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 entrance in that location isn't uh, a result of one of our previous appearances before the planning uh, committee just because i i know that we haven't changed the, the, the lay of the land. Uh, the one thing that's changed since we appeared looking for the bistro license is that we deactivated the rooftop and put that emphasis on reactivating the streetscape side, which was something that we heard from the uh, committee early on, and we, or we concur because we want to bring that vibrancy to the off of the street into the building. And so the, uh, that ground-level patio now has that kind of... Um, street level appeal that we love and we've taken mm -hmm. the That's rooftop great. what we haven't played with is really the the lay of the land on in the parking lot since our first appearance so just to sum it up for me and i'm an architect not a civil engineer so our civil engineer is playing sick and the other one is an alternate and we don't have room for them up here but my sense of it is the curb cut would be better from a pedestrian car sort of conflict if it's shifted to the east Mm -hmm. Now, if there's a fiber optics thing running through there and uh, Indian burial ground yeah. or something, obviously you can't do this. Are yeah. there other reasons? I don't know. The alignment with, with, the, with the dumpster to be able to get a truck in and not have to maneuver through the parking lot would improve it. To take a chunk of landscaping from the east and apply it to the sort of entry zone and to not rely on stained concrete to make that link but actually yeah. make it a physical hardscape sort of link and bring a little architecture and lighting and a bench and I'm, yep. I'm really happy. Yep. And uh, I mean anything that pulls people into a restaurant makes restaurateurs happy. So. Anything else, Bert? No, that's it. I have a quick one. It's a lot easier than that. <laughs> the, um, 
you haven't satisfied the glazing requirement. Um, you're at 45 percent, and we require 70. Yeah. Uh, can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, and I think uh, we've talked about it a lot, and, and we know that it's at your discretion. But if you look at the at the way this building is constructed, your glazing requirement, um, the calculations are this particular band. Um, which I don't quote me, but I believe it's three feet off of the one feet above grade, two one eight feet above grade. So it's about a seven foot band. So that band uh, we go beyond, but it doesn't help our calculations. What's different about our space is two things. One is that uh, we're working with the existing uh, bus garage openings, which are sizable. I mean, you could literally drive a bus through them. Um, <laughs> but so and so we're using those existing. And then if you think of the the view itself from the street, there's a lot of glazing that's not in our calculation because we're a standalone building. I mean, when you walk out the street here, a lot of your glazing calculations are built based on storefronts, obviously. We have the beauty and benefit of having glazing on four corners of this building. And so from a, a driver or pedestrian standpoint, what they're seeing is incalculable glazing because they're seeing garage doors on the other side that aren't part of the formula. We don't get any credit for those. But we do feel that that the it satisfies the intention of your glazing requirement and that making sure that this is a, a, an open air feeling. We looked at changing it so that it would meet the requirements without having to ask for calculations of the side windows and side garage doors and we have like three of them. And what it ended up looking like is that we were proposing a jiffy lube in the rail district. Uh, and that's something that we just didn't want to do. And I know that Ann has been very careful to to celebrate this concrete structure as best we can and we do that by playing uh, by respecting the original intention and we think that that this is a very glassy building even though because of the way it has to be calculated it doesn't satisfy the glazing requirement thanks Stuart um, I just wanted to state something here in case some people have been at every meeting are going crazy we did see this on august 14th and i just went back to the minutes you had to leave right before and bert you weren't here so we've discussed this and then in the 2017 we've discussed this and i agree with you it was very much the same thing and one thing i just and we're usually pretty good about it of having new things come up and come up and like the more meetings you have the longer it goes and you keep finding stuff I mean let's look at the bottom line this is a phenomenal project I'm not I, to get tripped up on glazing it would destroy this thing I mean I think most of us think the aesthetic would just not be as cool as it's going to be the seven parking spots I mean there's parking you trip over parking over there there's you know that's the one street probably that has the most in fact we made the building all the way at the end put in a whole bunch of parking, even though they said probably nobody in the whole building would have a car. They've got park. I mean, there's there's parking down there. So I don't know. I just don't want to lose the, the forest for the trees. This is a phenomenal project. There's maybe <coughs> little tweaks here and there, but um, we haven't seen many better. Thank you, Jim. Uh, yeah, um, now my turn. Um, I think this is a great project, but when we spoke in August, I was eager, eager to let the pedestrian come into your site as easily as possible. We only get one bite at the cherry. We really do. This evening when I came to the meeting, I took a walk um, which allowed me to visit at least three restaurants through alleyways. I went to Commonwealth, I went to Pernoy, that was that how you pronounce it, the new place, and along the way I passed social. In each case I walked through a small alley to get to it. I would love to go from Cold Street to this development without having to walk round the boundaries. Now, we don't have a formal policy to do that, but I'm looking at your site plan and as far as I can see, we have got a chain link fence surrounding your development. Am I right? Yes. Existing. That is correct. There's an existing fence around the, the north side. 
and Jana tell me we don't have oof, uh, we don't have formal agreements for pedestrian access to book to, to sites do we we cannot make it a mandatory requirement to share access. Mm -hmm. I did talk to the applicant about this since the last meeting, and I think, as they mentioned, they were going to meet with Don Bailey, who's the property owner to the north. So I don't know if you had any discussions to that effect uh, we, with him. On his cruise, I think it's, um, it's fair to say that we're passionate about making it as easy as possible for anybody to get to the rest. <laughs> and, uh, and we definitely... Um, we will invest in walkability to that end. So if any of these adjacent developments happen, I can assure you that if they're willing to, to bridge the two, we're willing to make uh, adjustments on our end to accommodate that, because that's just good business. So, I mean, particularly for your takeaway, for the idea of the drop-in, drop-out, yeah. these, talking about where the parking really is an issue, Cole Street. Right. So there's lots of people there at all at all hours during the day, N not at night. I think they have lunchtime. But at, particularly in the sort of busy time between eleven and four, this is a vibrant area. Yeah. And if if you could get somebody to come down and put a little sign, up, <coughs> probably legal. Who cares to come to come <laughs> to get through the gap yeah. into? I'm, I'm dead serious. No, we agree. Yeah. And if we don't do it, if we don't use this pulpit to say it, then things don't happen. Yeah. We know that. Yeah. We know it. We've been here a long time. We've got to be more proactive from our own position here. And I'd urge you, and they urge the city to help, to try and get this place more walkable, really walkable. Yep. Yeah. Well, and, we, and, 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 and here's a great opportunity to do it. We absolutely agree. And I think, and Janet can correct me if I'm wrong, but one of the benefits on the city side of a slup is that it is kind of you have the opportunity to revisit this on an ongoing basis in that it's not as evergreen as a typical approval. And we absolutely understand that. That's nice. Good idea. <clears throat> is that is that building Janet just for the is that the one that uh, they just put in the it's a gym and a uh, the mm -hmm. bar, the mm -hmm. belly bar mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So mm -hmm. So if that if that is the way it lines up. Those guys haven't finished their blacktop. They've got the first level in. So maybe when they do the second level, chain cutter. Chain cutter. I think there are dogs over there. I never said that. <laughs> the dogs are next door. I, I did check. Yeah, that they're one. one over. They're one over. I checked that one. Right. Don't worry. <clears throat> That's all I have to say. I hope this project comes to fruition. Any other comments, questions for the applicant? Thank you. Thank you very uh, much. I think now to the public, if the public has any comments, people would like to make comments, now's the time. Good evening, I'm Catherine Abood uh, from Armstrong White at 2125 East Lincoln. So thank you again for reviewing this plan yet again. We're very excited about this project as the neighbors. I did want to just make one comment to address your concerns. We did have an event this morning that was unusual for us. So I was sitting in the audience and I thought I'd like to put that on the record. And as the person who is there every morning and Monday through Friday and sometimes on weekends too, we have a ton of free parking over there. I mean, there's usually never a parking problem between the public spaces, our spaces and what's around we don't have high density parking use over there so that's my only comment and thank you and I hope you take it to a vote and I hope you vote yes tonight thank you other comments from the public okay back to the board um, what's the will of the board bird I, I I'll, I'll just sort of, do you want, uh, and I think your concern was more on site plan issues. Um, well, so we, we got, we've got separate considerations here. We've got uh, special land use permit and any conditions we think we want to recommend to the commission, and we've got final site plan, and we will consider those issues separately. Not at the same time. So let's let's first consider the first item E1, which is special land use permit. What's the will of the board? 
and what conditions, if any, need to be attached other or in addition to those set forth in the suggested motion, which are seven in number. I think if we're, uh -huh. if we're inclined to proceed, you know, in terms of a special land use permit, I would say that additional conditions would be that the, um, the cross parking agreement allow cross parking during all hours that the facility is open. Number one. Number two. Jan, I, let's do this slowly so Jan can get these down. Yep. Number two would be through an instrument recorded with the Oakland County Register of Deeds that this that the slop um, require that there always be or well, I'll say it differently that it be a breach of the slop if a parking agreement is not in effect. And that the slop prohibit the relocation of ingress egress drives without the city's approval. I don't know that we necessarily need to say that. We can if you want to be overly cautious, but they cannot move a driveway without the city's approval under a slop anyway. Right, but the, the, that would typically be an engineering function. So maybe we ought to say the planning board. So, I mean, I think it is important that, because the, the engineers have a different, or a sometimes different view of when something should or shouldn't be. I don't think it hurts to put it in. Okay. So you want the SLEP to state that the driveways cannot be moved? Right. Without city approval? Without what? SLEP approval? Without SLEP approval. Amendment. Yeah. Okay. Amendment. Yeah. Amendment. Yeah. And, and I take it. We're not going. We're not going to attach a requirement for a study. That's the sense I get from the board. Uh, I, for me, you know, I, I accept Ms. Abood's you know, statement, and I acknowledged even today that I was there on a one-off, and who knows okay. what was going on. So I think the answer is we don't. Uh, we don't include that. Um, there are some seven. So I guess with those four additional items, Ms. Chair, you prepared to make a motion? I think I are. So have at it then. Give me a moment. And and at this point, everybody understands we're only looking at um, item E1, which is special land use permit. Brian, just for our, for our own benefit. Twenty-five. In terms of what page are we looking at? Just to be clear. Oh, I'm looking at my printed 25. out. Version. It's twenty-five. Based on a, okay. I, I move that based on a uh, review of the all the materials submitted and the uh, uh, information presented at the hearing tonight, that we find that the criteria listed in Article Seven, Section Seven Two Seven and Seven Three Four of the Zoning Board Ordinance being satisfied, the Planning Board recommends approval of the applicant's request for a. Special land use permit for 2159 East Lincoln, Lincoln Yard, to the City Commission with the following special conditions. Number one, the applicant obtained zoning amendment approval for the subject property to be eligible for an economic development liquor license according to Chapter 126 Zoning Ordinance Appendix C, Exhibit 1, and Chapter 126 Zoning Ordinance Article 2, Section 2.39. MX uses required a special land use permit. Number two, the applicant indicates a color for the city standard benches and spectacles. <coughs> Number three, the applicant provides window details. I'm sorry, I, I take that one. I'm not going to put that one forward. Um, the applicant provide location design specifics for the outdoor dining refuse containers. Or the applicant provides details regarding the material size and height of the signs. We don't need that for this. No, we don't need that. <laughs> 
I'm not sure we need the no. It was just the attachment. That's the only yeah. thing we didn't have, right? Um, no, that's site plan. So the second one will then be the applicant to provide details regarding what type of liquor license they will transfer yes. to the city, who owns it, mm -hmm. who it was purchased from, whether or not they have endorsements attached. So it's, it's really one and seven is published in the four additional items you've raised. I went through, yes. Yep. That's your motion? That's the motion. Is there a second? Second. Uh, discussion? Uh, to the public on the motion. It's item one uh, and item seven, and then the four additional items uh, that have been uh, stated uh, by Mr. Chair. Okay, let's uh, let's call for a roll call vote. Daniel Scher? Yes. Robin Boyle? Yes. Stuart Jeffries? Yes. Bert Kosek? Yes. Brian Williams? No. Janelle Whipple Boyce? Yes. Nassim Merman? Yes. Okay, the the recommendation on SLUP is approved. Uh, and now we should consider a uh, final site plan, which would include and I'm looking at Mr. Kosak, who is our architect, to uh, tidy up his comments in a motion form. What, what, <laughs> what page are we on? 25. 25. It's the same thing. It's the same we thing we need to consider uh, the items we did not consider in the slop, which, I, two, which are items six. 2, 3, 4, five, 5, and 6. As well, and I guess one question is whether we're supportive of Ms. Kosek's general redrawing of the site in terms of relocating the drive and the, the entryway, and whether we're comfortable, if so, whether we're comfortable having staff review that, or whether that ought to be something that comes back or something we can see it. And I guess, so let me comment, make a comment on that. The... <clears throat> As I said, I'm in favor of this project. I think it's a great project. I'm not trying to get caught up in the weeds, but this is the only chance we get to see this thing. And I can think of circumstances recently where we haven't been as detailed. It went to the commission and it came back to us because we weren't detailed enough. So my comments have to do with, I'm going to call it, these are safety issues. So to me, that's the most important thing we can do. So if I can, if, if I can, or if they can, through design, make something more safe, we should be doing that. And we have greater principles, design principles, within our community, within this district. And it's about, you know, and, and, and even the petitioner said it very eloquently about the pedestrian linkage and walkability. And, and so if we can improve upon that, and, you know, in my mind, it wouldn't be a deal breaker if this was my building. I'd probably even say, you know, my view is it, it, it made it better. It, it allowed people to have easier access to the building. And I'm concerned about somebody pulling in because it's going to be a busy place and making a quick left-hand turn. you got people trying to... So, so Bert, do you want to see this again, or do you want to let staff approve it? That was the issue put to you. I'm fine with staff approving it, because I, 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 I sense, at least you understand, that's only my view. And the main considerations, principles. as I understand it, are enhancing the pedestrian entrance. Right. Uh, Increasing the landscape To make it more area. pedestrian friendly. Right. And, and safer. Right yes. And moving uh, the access entrance right yeah. to and, the east right and if for whatever reason that can't be done um but well, we can then, leave then that can't be done we leave that decision right. yes. to the staff yes It'd be my and, and is he, let me also ask i don't think there's street is the parking along the street um is Straight? it painted with lines now striped no striped. No. it's not striped. No. It's not. so their plan shows it as being striped would they be obligated to stripe it or is no. it no we okay. don't stripe in the rail district right now okay it just, that just allows them to delineate how many cars could fit there. Yeah, okay. probably get 10 yeah. cars. Yeah. <laughs> um, 10 smaller cars. So I, I did some questions for Bert. So I think it might be, have the potential to be safer doing that. My concern is, is that we've got, what, 32 inch vegetation there? Is that what our wall is? 32 inch yeah. minimum, yeah. So those designed to hide the cars. Well, hides the cars, but it also hides the people sitting at those tables. So I'm driving down the street and I'm not 
because the entrance is so far, it's over next to that quality, I mean, um, a bump shop. So I come in and I'm coming into this restaurant, I'm driving in, I got probably the nasty side of a bump shop building and a dumpster straight ahead. Not exactly getting me excited, you know. Way over here is the entrance. So to me, when you're driving on the street, the entrance is open wider, giving you a view of that front corner and the entrance and the, the patio. We move it over, I'm afraid you could drive down and not know that there's much going on there. You're talking about collision coach is right here. Yeah, the, and it's a pretty tall building. Repair. I mean, it's just a flat, nasty paint peeling wall. <laughs> Again, our chairman, I, you know, I, I, that's not my expertise. I, it's, it's just, you know, general plan. Well, as a general public could comment, I'll let the public comment, particularly as somebody with an engineering degree. <laughs> Now's a good time. <laughs> I guess this comment will be yeah, as, it, as now's a, a good time um, to get off the as a member of the public. Role. This is Jason Jason M. Ryan, 720 Benville Avenue. Uh, one thing Mr. Kosick didn't know was, and, and this is of particular safety importance, is the truck turning movements. Shifting this entrance to the east will be certainly better for the garbage trucks. But a garbage truck is a lot shorter has a much shorter turning radius than a delivery truck that has a 40 foot trailer. Shifting this entrance over here will make it nearly impossible to get to the loading docks in a long truck. And if a truck shows up late morning, 10 a.m., that truck's going to be making all these crazy turns or trying to while pedestrians are running around going in and out of these doors. So I think, actually, if this is where the loading dock's going to stay, I think it's much safer having the entrance lined up here. I would, however, look at lining up this entrance so this um, uh, is lined up exactly with the 21 foot radius over here. I'd shift this over a foot or two and bump all this down so this lines up exactly north and south. And, but and, and that doesn't mean though this left hand turn coming in here there could be some additional improvements for pedestrians coming in. Yeah it, and what about the raised uh, the comment that Bert made with reference to the Troy train station of raising the pavement level. I mean, that, that's just a, I, I don't think that will considerably improve the site safety, actually. Okay. Um, I think this all, it meets all the ADA compliance things based on looking at this. Obviously, it's got to be graded. But he's absolutely right, making this left-hand turn. You know, everyone's going to be focused on the entrance coming in. This car is going to be making this left-hand turning movement. It's going to be looking at the entrance of the building, and they're not going to be looking for this pedestrian coming across right here. So I don't know what improvements can be made. It's a site design thing that they got to look at. Um, but what they're showing right now is compliant with all standards and codes and all that. So, Thank you. Can I ask Jason public? a question? <laughs> you can ask the public a question. The public question. <laughs> Does it factor in that when you're coming in that driveway and you're turning left looking for a parking space, you're going three miles an hour? I mean, we're not, you know, as far, I, I get that you'll maybe be looking at the entry but uh, to not see pedestrians seems like a sort of a far fetched idea because you're going so slow you're absolutely right and I, I actually agree with you I'm, I'm totally comfortable with this yeah but from a human factors perspective not an engineering perspective uh, someone I could see that potentially being a problem I well, they, you Mr. can Kozak solve part of that, can't they? Put some signage there, pedestrian crossings. So they could do signage or yeah. any kinds of so things I, like I that. So I think there's so. things they can do to... Right. But to, I'm, uh, from my perspective, if I was sitting on the board tonight, I would be totally fine with this layout. I would just recommend it get shifted slightly to line up with the trucks. I'm more concerned about trucks hitting people than I am slow cars driving three miles an hour. Okay. A truck backing up, not being able to see everybody, I think is the most dangerous thing on the site. Okay. okay. Kind of an, another question for the public. <laughs> <laughs> for the public. <laughs> um, <coughs> but if they didn't shift it, I mean, if he's backing up, he's going to be all the way on the one side. I mean, isn't there enough for him to be able to have a straight shot? I mean, do you have to have both lanes totally lined up with? Just no, the, the no truck? it's. I mean, it's kind of okay. I think more of an aesthetic thing. <clears throat> Someone's pulling in, and this is slightly staggered a little bit. It just seems kind of <clears throat> odd to me. Yeah. That's all. Um, 
I'd be worried about this truck. The truck's gonna be driving, driving down uh, Lincoln Street, and it's gonna be backing in, and its trailer end's gonna be coming out this way, pointing right at, right at this curb that's now sticking out. If it was actually staggered the other way, I think it'd be better, actually. Okay. From a truck turning movement. Thank you, John Q. Public. Uh, additional comments from the board? So, um, so I've changed my mind on at least one item, but, but I still think increasing the width of that landscape hardscape zone and flipping, stealing it from flipping it. the other side would be beneficial to the project. And okay, so with that, why don't you make the motion? I agree with that. You agree. Okay? So how do I do this? I'm Start so, with I'm number sorry. two. Number, number two. Six. Start with number two through can six. Number one, can we can we approve oh. this project? No, we can't. You're right. Yeah. It's got to go one through seven. Yeah. And then you add your. Am I here? Yeah, you're right there. Yeah. And then you got to keep going. So <laughs> the chair would be looking for a motion whereby the planning board would recommend approval of the final site plan with items one through seven and however you want to fashion number eight. Well, wait, number three shouldn't be in there. Are we, are we asking no, for them to... Yeah, if we're comfortable with it. Which is no, three should be in there. It's not about the square footage. It's about being able to see through the glass. Yeah. Oh, that's the 80 per... Oh, yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Which I've been told is almost impossible to buy. And where's the part that shows it's not compliant with the 70% um, glazing? That's not, that isn't there. So we don't need there. to say it because we're approving it. We're that's approving it. Okay, so it doesn't need the Board of Zoning Appeals. Yeah, that's no, okay. we no. have the discretion. Right, okay. All and right. that's true for the cutoff fixtures as well. Yes. Correct. Yes. And what about plaster? Do we have to say something about plastic chairs or are they permitted? Are they, pr they are permitted if it's are of, of a high quality, similar, what does it say? Wood, metal, et cetera, or other high quality materials or something to that effect. They're high quality. They are, okay. Okay. All right, so Bert. let me try this here. Um, I move to approve the I app. To recommend approval. Recommend approval recommend to the approval city commission. to the city commission um, of the applicant's request for final site plan and slope no, no slope second. review. We did that. 42159 East Lincoln Lincoln Yard to the City Commission with the following conditions. Um, can I just sum this up? One through seven were dealt with in a previous no. No, motion. Just, just on there. Yeah. One through seven. Read mm -hmm. them all. Yes. No. No, one through no. seven. One through seven. We got it. They're in the materials. One through seven, okay. And I add one additional um, requirement, and that is the... the um, number eight. Number eight, the landscape zone that aligns with the... which is south of the main entrance to the building be increased in width by reducing one parking space to the west of this subject landscape zone and and um, increasing the parking lot to the east to compensate for the loss of parking and this is to increase the linkage to the pedestrian right away and uh, increase safety thank you flipped your east and west no didn't you mean landscape zone south of the main entrance be increased by one's parking space, which would be deleted uh, or the space from the parking space to the east? Yes, right. deleted to the east and right. added. De it, yeah. Delete to the west, so increasing the landscape. Yeah, increase to generally the east. by one oh, parking here. space. Delete here. If you want to move this. Yeah. Right. Over here. Yeah. Got it. This okay. part. He had yes. it right. Yes. He had it right. I apologize. You had it right. It's my dyslexia, but this time I got it right. <laughs> okay. All right. That's the motion. Is there a second? Before we move, uh, could I ask um, if Bert would accept an additional item to propose? Yes. That, quote, the applicant shall meet with adjacent property owners to explore pedestrian access on the north side of the proposed restaurant. I will accept that. Do you want to add that and report the results to staff? 
otherwise how do we know they've met yeah well, I'm, 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 I'm just asking that they meet I'm not I'm not saying that it is a deal, okay. a deal breaker okay so that's like to, item number nine yeah I just correct. like to have it minuted and in okay. the in the in the statement that we're we're, we're pushing this all okay. right so you're suggesting number nine he's accepted this are you going to second his motion now I am there you go so, okay, I think we have a motion one through nine. It's been motioned and seconded, uh, and now I'm going to open it to the public. <coughs> I'm exhausted, but um, uh, let's vote. Roll call vote again. Bert Kozak? Yes. Robin Boyle? Yes. Stuart Jeffries? Yes. Daniel Sher? Yes. Brian Williams? No. Janelle Wilpo Boyce? Yes. Missy Merman? Yes. Okay, uh, the recommendation on SLUP and recommendation on final site plan will now go to the City Commission. Um, as Matt has already pointed out, the, re the recommendation or request to uh, permit economic development license in this area will also be at the City Commission, so that's where you appear next. Thank you for your attendance. Now we move on to uh, item E2, which is special land use permit for 298 South Old Woodward Daxton Hotel. And uh, F2, final site plan and design review for the same 298 South Old Woodward Daxton Hotel. Or as they say now, they're back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Again. And uh, Jana, you're up. I'm up. Just need to get the right page. There we go. Okay. Yes, okay. they're back. Page 170. Thanks. <laughs> Well, as you know, this building is already under construction, so we've already seen it, reviewed it, et cetera. They're back today for a liquor license, which requires then a SLUP approval, which they did not need previously when they got their uh, building approved. So I think we're all familiar with where this site is at the corner of Brown and Old Woodward. It's zone B4 and D4 in the overlay district. And as you recall, there was an amendment made approximately a year and a half ago to allow liquor licenses to be transferred in for either hotels or theaters within the B4 zoning district. This property is B4, um, the Birmingham Theater got a liquor license under that amendment and this would be the second application under that proposed amendment. Um, and there is a minimum requirement there be at least 100 rooms in the hotel uh, if the liquor license is proposed to be brought in, and there are 151 in the, at this particular property. The owner of the property, or the applicant, is Woodward Brown Ventures LLC slash Aperium Hotel Group, and they are proposing to bring in a Class B hotel resort license to come into the city under this special hotel category. Um, the ownership information for that LLC group, uh, essentially it's controlled by Mario Tricocci, which I might have said wrong, sorry, uh, Kevin Robinson and Howard Silverman. Uh, they are also members of the LLC that owns and operates a Detroit Foundation Hotel and the Apparatus Room Restaurant in downtown Detroit. So they have submitted all of their paperwork to the LCC and to the Birmingham Police Department, who then does an investigation of those owners and looks in to see if they have any issues with the criminal history all kinds of things. They have, they have, they do not. They don't have any issues with the police department, and that report is done. That inspection is or uh, investigation is complete. So it will. They still have to send that investigation to the city commission, and we have been doing it now at the same time that the SLUP application goes to the city commission. So uh, I don't want to review everything that happened here uh, before, but it is in the in the parking assessment district, so they're not required to provide. Parking on site, as we know from before, they are proposing some parking underground. How many this spots? Oh boy. Um, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Way more than a need. lot. Look at 55. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just to just for the public that's watching, just to give you an idea, um, the entry to the hotel is over here in this area. Uh, they're proposing a restaurant slash bar in this front corner along Brown with private dining back here. So it's more the sit down uh, service and more of the bar area at the front. And then they have the banquet facility that we talked about before, and then the pre-function areas. 
some, they're calling parlors in the front and a wine room over here. So that's essentially what they're proposing. On the outside, uh, they have the new streetscape standards. You saw in my report that I provided a couple of comments about the different sheets being inconsistent with regards to where the street trees were, where the planters were, where the lights were, et cetera, and engineering called that out as well. Um, that's why you have the new set of plans before you tonight with the uh, consistent sheets with the consistent details. You can see on the one up here as well, it showed some outdoor dining. That was only on one sheet, and they are proposing not to include that at this time. They may come back. They are they are seeking an outdoor dining endorsement on their liquor license, but they'll do that at a later date. So they have corrected all of the issues with regards to pedestrian access, circulation, streetscape, etc. on the plans now, and those were uh, some of the comments called out. They're not proposing any new lighting at this time. The engineering department had some comments, as I mentioned already, uh, and then they had some comments with regards to the outdoor dining, which also does not apply now. So under this new ordinance that we have for hotel and theater liquor licenses, um, essentially we want to show, if you want to approve this or recommend approval, you want to show that it constitutes a substantial benefit to the city for the continuation and development of theaters and hotels downtown in the B4 district, and if so, then it's something that you might want to recommend under this option. As I mentioned, with hotels, you have to have at least 100 rooms. They do meet this requirement. There are several other requirements that go into the review process for determining whether or not you should consider granting or allowing this license to come in under this hotel option. Um, they have to show basically the type of licenses that are out there. Are there any other quota licenses available? Um, that they could use. They have to provide a, a site plan of the property, a floor plan, operations plan, etc., to show what they're proposing, an economic impact analysis, a copy of the special land use permit and all applications submitted, all documentation submitted to the MLCC, which as I stated, they have provided full identification and history of license holders, and information explaining how this license and the proposed operation would create or sustain the theater or hotel, in this case, in the city, and any other items necessary. So to go through those requirements, they did provide information that shows that they're, that all quota licenses are currently in use with the exception of four. Um, Peabody, Willits for Mitchells, Willits for Camerons, and the Palladium of Birmingham. All four of those, however, they note are not for sale because they're being held by the property owners or the landlords so that when another business comes in, they can be utilized. Of course, you know we saw previously slice shift and sidecar would of course be using one of these from the old former Mitchell space. Uh, they have provided, as you saw in the packet, a full site plan, interior floor plan, um, of the, ho of the proposed hotel and the banquet facilities and all of the licensed areas where alcohol would be served, the bar, the restaurant, the banquet area, the wine bar, etc. They did not provide an operations plan, as I mentioned in the report. However, they did have a detailed operations plan in terms of how they handled control crowd control and people coming and going at the... Uh, when the building was approved itself. So I did ask that they clarify whether that would still be in play. And I understand they have submitted something in your packet tonight uh, that is dealing with an operations plan, but I believe their attorney will be addressing that. Uh, and essentially in that it indicates that they will have all of the required alcohol training for their servers within the restaurants, within the bar, within the banquet areas. Uh, they do propose to deliver drinks to rooms for room service. Uh, and they have indicated all of the hours in that, but as I said, I'll let them explain that. Essentially, the hours of operations for liquor sales, though, will be seven days a week from 7 a.m. to 2 a.m. <clears throat> They've also submitted an economic impact analysis. They've obviously shown they have the 100 rooms. They've stated that they're making an investment of approximately $76 million in the site, so it is a substantial investment. They are stating that this hotel will provide 125 full-time equivalent jobs. That was with clarification I asked for in the memo. They did provide that in their letter that you received tonight. Uh, previously, it said 175 permanent jobs, and those are 125 full-time equivalents. So some may be full-time, some may be part-time. Also, they're proposing uh, that probably around 300 construction jobs will be created as a result of the construction of this building. And they've stated that the uh, economic impact of the hotel having a liquor 
liquor license will be positive for the city and it will likely result in an increase in the assessed value of 11 times what it was before this uh, property was developed so that is substantial um, they have submitted all their slup applications uh, supporting documentation and as I mentioned they've given all the information to the police department the investigation has shown that none of the three principals have a criminal history nor a history of any liquor violations within the state of Michigan um, the applicant has stated that the service of alcohol is required for the operation of the Daxton Hotel, given market trends and the need to compete with other hotels in the area, with which also serve um, alcohol. Uh, so, just so, Jana, can I stop you? Sure. Right now, what what's the alternative other than the hotel liquor license? What do you mean? What's the well, alternative? If if in fact you're saying that, and the applicant saying that that the liquor license is essential to the operation of the hotel. What are the, what's the alternative other than approval of this hotel liquor license? Uh, well, the other, only other way to bring in a li you either buy a Class C that's available, which they're stating that there is not one available for sale, or you have to apply for a bistro, which this would not qualify for given the size of the operation inside with regards to dining, or an economic development license, and this property is not within the economic development boundaries that we just talked about at the last application. That was something the applicant had previously discussed. Then when the hotel and uh, theater license option came available, they decided to go under that. So their only other choice, really, because there are no Class Cs available for sale, a bistro wouldn't fit, would be to amend the economic development map. Okay, thank you. To bring this into the area that would qualify I for just, an economic I want to know the parameters of what we're talking about here. Um, so then we have to look at selection criteria. If you were going to select one, a hotel to have a liquor license under this new category, you have to look at all of the different factors. Um, ability to finance, um, track record with the city, adequate site plan, adequate health and sanitary facilities, um, whether they have outstanding obligations to the city, etc. So just to review through those, they do have, they have submitted a letter from their attorney stating that they have the financial capability to not only construct this but to also to operate this hotel. Uh, it states that the property is owned free and clear and the LLC has provided the funds for the development through the middle of August at which time they did get a construction loan through Flag Flagstar Bank and that they have sufficient uh, money to, to con finish construction and to operate the hotel. They do have a track record of responding to both city and citizen concerns. There have been a couple of little things that have come up during construction of the site, and they've been quick to respond and to address those issues. They do have an adequate site plan and floor plan to accommodate the proposed, not only the serving of food and the banquet facility and the parking, which we went through extensively at the site plan review, but also to accommodate the service of alcohol in those areas. They do have adequate health and sanitary facilities. They do not have any outstanding obligations to the city. <coughs> As I stated earlier, under this particular option, they, the city can issue up to two licenses per year for a hotel or theater. There hasn't been one within the last year. And the Daxton Hotel is the only hotel that's existing or under construction that would be qualified to even to even fall under this option for a hotel because they're the only other one that's in the B4 zone district. There, there's another hotel in the city that is not in the B4 zone district that wouldn't qualify for. With regards to the design review, there have been a couple of interior changes. They've shifted around the location of the wine room slash wine bar area a little bit, but all in all the numbers of seats are, are fairly consistent with what they had before. Um, as I said, they did show that they had outdoor dining, but that has been removed. So they will not be proceeding with that at this time. There are no exterior changes proposed to the building, except that one of their elevation sheets shows a Daxton sign, a name letter sign mounted on the top of a canopy. Um, the applicant has indicated that they, they would like to have a sign there, uh, but they would come back for that at a later date because they haven't clarified exactly what they want with their ownership team and how big, et cetera. That's why they didn't have all of the details at this time. Um, signage, basically, because of the size of this site, they can have up to 100 square feet of signage. So just as a ballpark, what they're proposing is well under what they're allowed to have um, once they submit all the details showing what they want. With regards to the downtown Birmingham 2016 overlay district, this is 
in the Red Line Retail District, so it does require active retail uses along the first floor. Restaurant does count as a retail use. Food and drink establishments do. So that's what they have uh, along the whole facade. Um, obviously, the 2016 plan also calls for bringing more life and activity to the downtown, bringing more people. Uh, through residential units in particular. This does have a fifth floor with residential units. Plus a hotel itself obviously brings in maybe not permanent residents, but people that are coming to stay overnight in the downtown and they'll then walk around and, and patronize the other shops and establishments. So essentially the uh, recommendation is that based on a review of everything that the planning board may wish to consider uh, recommending approval to the city commission, <coughs> Uh, there were several conditions that were listed in the report. Um, number one was to correct all plan sheets for consistency and submit a revised operations plan. I do hope that the applicant will at least discuss their operations plan in a little bit since the uh, board hasn't had a time, hasn't necessarily had the time to read through all of that. Um, they have corrected the plan sheets for consistency. Two, three, and four were all with regards to outdoor dining, which they've stated they are not going to provide, and they have removed that from the plans. So two, three, and four would be off the table. That the applicant provide all signage details to determine compliance prior to appearing before the city commission. Now they can do that, or they can come back for a slop amendment later for the sign. It's up to them. Uh, what they want to do and that they comply with the requests of the city departments and the only other thing I didn't mention from engineering was it was with regards to the inconsistent sheets where the street trees were where the lights were and make sure that they're exactly the way they were supposed to be when the project the North Old Woodward project was designed uh, and what was previously approved so they would have to deal with that as well and that's it thank you uh, a couple of comments I have before we of the rest of the board. One, the chairman uh, had asked me to communicate his concern about hours of operation, but I think that primarily had to do with um, outdoor dining. Um, and I know I have to say I've been contacted by neighbors myself uh, who were concerned about noise level, particularly after midnight. Um, I'm assuming that was because the outdoor dining was proposed and was in the a uh, packet of materials that were made available to the public, so um, I'm not going to uh, make a big deal out of that at all, um, particularly because the fifth floor of this site is residential. Uh, I, I assume the applicant is also equally concerned about noise levels, uh, uh, which means Robin can't have any parties in this hotel because uh, uh, his noise level is pretty high. So, uh, but I think I've communicated the chairman's concern, but I think it was primarily with respect to outdoor dining. To the extent that you are reserving that for future consideration, bear in mind that hours of operation outside are going to be an issue, I think, at least with me and probably with the chairman. Board, comments? Additional comments? I got a few. Um, and for Jana, really. Um, so I just pulled up what we approved on August 9th, 2017. Because I'm thinking, wasn't there, when we, we made some exceptions on lighting and that via, and we were all excited because there wasn't just gonna be like a dead end via or end up in that guy's parking lot. There was gonna be an establishment, like a wine bar on that alley. And now it's a uh, storage room and a pastry and ice cream place or storage or something other. Um, so that was one thing. And then, um, is there a difference in our ordinance between uh, food and beverage and banquet? Because I think about how many times I walk by the towns and on an almost daily basis and I look in there and it's just, they have the doors and then you gotta go in and then you're in the rooms, but 90%, 85%, 80%, significant number amount of the time, there's nothing going on. It's just big round tables with tablecloths and, and stacked up chairs. And that is a primo area right there if that's what we're gonna end up seeing most of the time. Well, I think that's something you'd want to address to the applicant. Because when, I know at one point in this iteration, we had, there's going to be retail, and they talked about an art gallery. In fact, in this thing, what we approved, it says, 
gallery and entry. Um, so, at any rate, uh, two. Right, and that's why I had raised the issue as to what other retail uses would be in there. The, the plan that was approved did not show the shops or hair salons, et cetera, that we had talked about at some point. It during showed the one process. gallery. It showed, well, this still shows a gallery and lobby right here. Uh, if you want to, I don't really know how you define scale. gallery, but yeah. Yeah. but you're correct. The wine bar and wine room has moved where it previously used well, to be open to the VIP. It's not, it's, it wasn't, an, it wasn't, yeah, ever, this, it wasn't yeah. ever an art gallery, I don't think. It says gallery. It's not an art gallery. Well, they talked about selling art. You were talking about what kind of retail would be in there. Um, but that wine bar, is a, to me, was going to be a, an establishment. You come off the street and go and have a glass of wine. This looks like it's a, uh, a function of the banquet thing, like you could have a little private party, and there's only one table in there. It'd be kind of a odd deal. So, anyway, it's how does this stuff change like this? I mean, every now and then, I just assume I've lost my mind when we go by <laughs> and say, did we approve that? No, this is a special land use permit, so that it's based on, it includes the floor plan. So you can approve that change or not approve that change. And that goes specifically to the issue of the liquor license and where the alcohol is going to be served and what the type of establishment is with regards to the wine bar. But if this thing didn't come back and it was just totally different, I mean, this is, I, to, in my mind, I don't know, you guys might disagree, there's kind of a couple of significant changes. Okay, I think we should have the applicant address. Uh, any other comments from the board? Chair? Briefly, which is, I, I'm just wondering, well, two, I guess. One is, I know that there was some discussion way back when about a parking plan you know, with uh, Hot Woodward. And in reading Jana's report, it seemed like there was over 500 people who could be in this facility for banquets and what have you at any one time. And I'm wondering, Jenna, do you know if the parking study or not the parking agreement, operations agreement, whatever that was, had that much um, activity? It, it did. It was very similar in terms of the restaurant, bar, and banquet facility okay. capacity. Okay. And then the other just observation is I'm not sure if the uh, hotel needs liquor from 7 a.m. to 11 a.m. to survive and compete. I know what not. <laughs> <laughs> so to Stuart's point, I, I am a little bit concerned. Um, we just got this when we sat down and this is a lot of material and to go back and forth from what's in our packet and what we reviewed to what's in front of us and to see what's different and what's not not what we thought it was feel like I'm really on the spot. I hope you'll be able to go through and identify where there are differences um, because I just keep flipping pages on the computer and then the packet and, that you gave tonight and I'm just trying to make sure I see and know everything. So I'm a little uncomfortable. Let me add to that also because I, I, I agree it's con confusing and does the public have what we were handed at the beginning of the meeting? No, but, but the public um, does not. But in the, in the packet, I don't think it's in that packet, but the one that we were given, it shows some renderings yeah. of, it refers to it as the previous and current. Previous and current. Because so, the dates are the same. So have we approved, quote unquote, current? Like why is that, why is that in here? Why does it show previous, or, or are there, Design changes to windows. I, I know, I know they were back here once because our ordinance didn't allow. Um, I think it was a metal panel or something right, on right. the upper floor, and right. and so we we approved stucco. But um, I don't recall the color. But I see window sizes are changing. I see colors are changing. Like Stuart, am I forgetting stuff, or the are these too. changes that we're considering today? I don't know. The railing was glass, and it's now not, I think. Okay, so. The intent be. of the plan and the report is that there are no exterior changes. There are interior layout changes, but okay. no exterior changes. Right. But, but the sheets are somewhat 
But this Confused. says yes. current and previous or something. So somebody, somebody needs to just How? let us know what we're reading. Okay. And, and if I can say, Mr. Chairman, it, it is confusing because we have previous and we have current, but both are dated the same day, which is very confusing to me as a reader. And and, and if I can just put my little hints in it. It, it concerns the central area that is set back from the f on the second floor up, where the fenestration is different. Now I think we approved that. We did. I, but my head's spinning because I can't quite remember if we did or not. We did. I thought we did. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay. Uh, well, Mr. Ratner, welcome, yes. and you have your work cut out. Thank you. Rick Ratner, 380 North Hills Road, Birmingham. Let me start out by saying these, I never like putting in this kind of packet on the night. However, this came in as a Friday when we got the notice. So my intention here was to bring you up to date and give you what was stated in the report and also what was said we had to do before we got to the city council. I tried to do it quickly over the weekend and get it into this <coughs> into this group so that uh, we couldn't make it to the to the packet. Uh, so that's why this is here. It only shows it shows the whole packet, mm -hmm. but the only changes are those four sheets or five sheets that were stated in in Jana's review, and that's what was interspersed here. Originally, I brought her five sheets that were supposed to be an answer to her to her report. And then we said, well, we'd like to see the whole sheet, seat, you know, in one package. So I went back and gave you a whole package. That's why the whole package is here. It wasn't an intent to throw something at you at the last minute. You also should understand, every one of the documents that was attached to the special land use plan was permitted and approved uh, by the city. And we went forward with our development and our um, construction based on all approved plans that we have permits for. So there isn't anything that is not approved. In a project like this, where you have uh, a large project, there are definitely going to be certain changes. And every one of those changes was brought to the city and to the planning department or the building department as necessary for approval. Now, having said that about the plans, uh, I have with me tonight the uh, president of the developer, uh, Jim Ugama, and Mr. Jeffrey Silverman, who's general counsel and the executive vice president of the developer. I also have the architect, uh, Marshall, who I'm going to uh, get up here in just a second. And also, we have the privilege of having the manager of this establishment, who is now running a house in Birmingham, and is with us, Aaron Black to talk about the operation of the liquor. Also, very importantly, I'm going to turn the floor over to our liquor attorney, Mr. Pat Howe, in a second, to talk about the liquor part of this slup, if that is okay with you. But most importantly, I want you to understand, nothing here was intended <clears throat> to throw a bunch of things at you at the last minute. Everything except five sheets was on the, uh, was on the web and with the plan. So if I can, I'd like to ask Pat to come up here and talk about the liquor operation. Yeah. Just a minute. Be before we go there, can we, can, I, I'm just trying to understand it, um, but can you go to the elevation, please? Are we talking site plans for it? No, we're just talking, I'm trying to understand the, so if, if I look Marshall. at that Marshall. upper elevation, and, and again, maybe we approve this. I'm just trying to understand. It. It's con it, what made it confusing is that what's the paper copy you gave us today is different than what I see up there. So if you zoom in to the upper left-hand corner, it does say lightly textured stucco on the upper floor. 
and I remember we approved that. The color depicted there, right or wrong, is darker than the color of the primary building. So in our packet, um, kind of to my disappointment a little bit, it looks like it's the same color as the rest of the building. And then in the center section of the elevation, those are large windows, those are large square windows. In the packet here, it, they're smaller and they're rectangular. So, so what did what did this board approve back a year ago, whenever that was? Eight, just just eight, to be clear, I didn't even think that was the focus of today's conversation, but it's just confusing. As the design. No, the, the, is, is that what's being built right there, or is it what's in our packet? Uh, uh, Marshall Butler with Booth Hanson, the architect. That was a preliminary drawing. What you have in your packet is what was permitted and approved. By whom? Oh, oh, okay. Was it approved by the city commission? No, it didn't go to the city commission. It would have gone through the building permit review process. <clears throat> I mean, I know that's not the original because the upper material has changed, and I know we approved that. We right, did. that material changed several times. Okay. It was metal, it was stone, and then it ended up as rough textured right. stucco. Right, right, right. Okay, so, so that, that drawing's not correct. That's not what's being built. So, okay. That, that just makes it confusing. It's in the packet. That's what we're referencing. In terms of the, the, the drawing is accurate with the exception of that bump out portion that was a change that was approved. Okay. That bump out was not originally that way. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> I'm getting it. <laughs> My recollection is um, after original approval, you came back. We changed the metal panel material on the top floor to a, a lighter colored stucco. It is confusing that it's rendered darker than the rest of the building in what we received tonight. Um, we changed the railing. Did I say that? From glass to, because we metal. didn't allow glass to something else. It's a metal else. picket railing. Unfortunately, Correct. we'd all much prefer glass, but here we are. Um, and there are the balcony bump outs um, on top of that green roof that come off of the two hotel suites. There are the rooms, level, right? The level five terrace, is that yes. what you're referring to? Yes. Kind of, kind of. Yes. Yeah, okay. The, the yes. residential rooms on five have terraces. Have terraces. Yes. Okay, just here's one that I just want to know that I'm not clear on is. I hear tonight that the outdoor dining is no longer part of the equation. Um, it is not on the paper part that was passed out tonight. It is on page 216 of our of our packet, um, electronic packet. So for the purpose of tonight, for that element, um, we're going to go to 216, ta-da. For that element of it, we should go off of the paper packet we've received tonight Correct. and not uh, that Correct. Page. Disregard the outdoor furniture that's shown on the ground floor plan. Are there any other things that are on this, on the electronic plan that are different on the paper plan? And can you go so over if, what those items if are? If you want, if you just wanted to start with the, where the drawings begin, I could point out differences and primarily they are relative to tree placement okay. and planter placement along Old Wardward. Great, let's do it. Can we do it? Sure. Thank you. Do you want to start on this one or? Well, we Whoever there I think we just start at the beginning of the drawings and we flip page by page because there's only five of them. I can tell you where they are. Well, we have like these? 20, so tell us, tell us what sheet numbers we should be looking just, at here. Let's get to the beginning of where the, so if that's where the drawings begin. So the southernmost light pole on Old Woodward that's in front of the entry is yes. missing on this drawing? Yes. It should be in the paper packet that you're looking at. I see it. Yep. On page A001. A001, yep. correct. Got it. it is also missing on this sheet as well. There's a, a symbol that looks kind of like one, but isn't, so it was corrected to reflect the other light pole symbols that were there. At A101? A101. Four more. 
A101. The exact same change is A001. I see it. Okay. Yep. <clears throat> Next. No change. No change. So the what's actually being or what was actually permitted is the bump out that you see here shows three stories of bump out. That's not the case. It's a single story of bump out with that long horizontal window. This was a preliminary that was revised. Okay. And what you have in your packet is what was permitted and approved. Right here. Okay. Okay. And then if you want to keep going. I do. So the same issue with the light pole here. And what sheet that? is that? IP.20.01.01. I see it. Okay. You want to keep going? The same thing was added to this sheet as well. Okay. And the outdoor dining on this one has been removed. Right. Okay. On landscape sheet, no change. That's it. That's it. Thank you for doing that. Clears no it up for me. Yeah, simple things, but it can be confusing. We understand. Thank you. We didn't want us to go through this and have those kind of things. Little things up. Can you respond to Stuart's comment yeah. about the wine bar and the alley? Marshall. So the the client's decision to relocate the wine bar was to downsize that. They were really concerned about the initial idea that it wasn't it wasn't what they were after. It wasn't their original vision. So to tie it to the front of the building and their estimation made more sense. So that, that space that is currently a storage room may years from now become something different depending on how the hotel operates. They may decide to do something else with it, but for now, the wine bar on the old Woodward side makes the most sense for them. Robin? Yes, that's that was where it was permitted and approved. Okay, could you also respond to the rewarding, words matter? We had the original as a wine room that appeared to us to be accessed through a door off the alley. This is now under the... As a wine bar. Wine bar to be accessed off the alley. That was what we approved, I believe. <coughs> now we have a wine room. Mm -hmm. Is it serving the same function? Can a member of the public access this as they would have previously from the alley, but now we've, re, we, we've reassigned it to the, you've reassigned it to the front of the building, can you still now use it in the same way as the previous space? No, you cannot. You, you, would have, you would be a patron of the hotel, and you could come in and they could serve wine in that space. You would not be getting at it off of the via. You would have to come through the hotel to do that. It wouldn't be accessed through through the via space. Is it is it like just when you have it open or is it actual business? A bar. A bar. bar. Or is it just a room where you could? I, think I would have to defer to oper operations for how they intend to operate that. Um, Mr. Good evening, Aaron Black, 2243 Dorchester Road in Birmingham for the last two weeks. Um, no, it is not the current or anticipated intent to operate that as an ongoing bar available to for public access. It would be, as we denoted it, uh, we would lump it under banquet space so it could be used for private functions. It would certainly be, we could display wine in that as a wine storage room or cabinetry around the room, but it would not be an ongoing operating business on a daily basis. Thank you. Jana, how does how does that happen? How, how do we approve it? Because I have it, I'm looking at it right here, and it says a wine thing, and now this is what they're building. And I remember we had a lot of discussion, and we were very excited about this. We've got a big thing in our city about activating vias, and we made an exception on light shining up because it would draw people back to this business. And now it's not only moved, but it's 
totally changed in a fraction of the size and something different. I, I, I mean, we have people come back for all kinds of little amendments and stuff. That is a change that they would have to have approved tonight. I mean, we, Mo Cherie over here came in because he put in nicer lights than the ones that were approved. And this is a much more significant change in my mind. I mean, I guess the parlor thing, we, we, there is, there, it did say something about a gallery, but I guess it doesn't say specifically retail. I'm, I do have a little bit of concern, but we, we, it said men's parlor and what we approved that this is going to be our latest um, Whole Foods window treatment. Stacked chairs and tables and lumped up linen and stuff. Um, just a primo section of town. I hope not. Hopefully they have 24-7 banquets. But. But we're approving the floor plan that's in the packet. Correct. And in the floor plan we're seeing sofas and lounge chairs and, and decorated rooms, not folding tables and stacking chairs in those two spaces. So I feel good about that. Um, and also I think um, as the interiors person on the board, I should state that the word gallery doesn't necessarily mean a, a shop where they're selling stuff. It's, it's also, you know, it denotes an entryway or a sort of a vestibule or an arcade or something along those lines. So I think that um, if we thought that gallery meant we were getting an art gallery at some point or a retail store called a gallery, I, I don't necessarily think that was what was intended. <clears throat> um, okay. So I'm not too concerned about that either. I appreciate the idea that we're <sighs> liking the wine room accessible from the via and I'm sad that we're losing the outdoor <laughs> dining area in the via as well and I don't believe that the wine room will operate the same way. Um, obviously it'll be more for hotel. parties, hotel guests, functions like that but um, <laughs> I I have to think back to the one we approved a moment ago, and and you know we, we have a tremendous investment in the city. We're getting something that I mean I think we're all so excited about, and I I I'm not going to be hung up on uh, them switching the alley wine room to a hotel guest wine room that's uh, operating well, from the front. It's, it's certainly. Um something that we would be renting not only to hotel guests but to outside patrons who, who would want to use the space that way. The both parlors and the wine room would obviously based on you know the proximity to well, being the, the majority of the front of the building being show ready at all times the idea would be to to create such an in, inviting environment that they would be rented all the time and, and certainly it could be an aspirational hope that the wine room would be in such demand that it would be utilized seven days a week it's just difficult to anticipate that at this point Help me out with, with one aspect. I'm looking at the north elevation. So that's you know, along the via way. So these are glass. Yeah, those are glass. Okay. And so when now that those are storage rooms and I'm not quite sure what the ice cream storage thing is, but it's a it's, it's a, a kitchen it's actually. A, I, a, I think it was designated as a so what what's the kitchen. person walking down the yeah. alley as they're looking into that glass gonna see? Empty room or kitchen equipment? It's presently unprogrammed space, but no, it obviously behooves us to, to find something that's compelling and attractive to the public so we can draw them in. Okay, I mean, I think that's part of the concern you're hearing is that I'm mean, like Ms. Whipple Voice, I'm not particularly bothered by the fact that you've changed the functionality of the wine room and you've you know, moved it to the front. That makes sense to me, but what is concerning, and we've seen this in a variety of places around town is we have the glass requirement to have an environment that activates the street and that draws people in and um, when property owners take and put shelving or chairs or something there it you know it doesn't look so good 
Oh no, it would be a lost opportunity to not leverage that mm -hmm. that that visual effect. So, in, in, and maybe you can help us out with the suggestion. Is there some way that you know we could tie that in to the approval to make sure that you know, at, uh, five years from now, when perhaps you're in another uh, facility, somebody doesn't say, you know what, we got 30 extra chairs, let's throw them in there. Um, you could certainly say that if that space was to be used for storage for any reason, that, that that purpose would have to be obscured to the public on the outside of the building. But I don't think the board wants it obscured either. The point is they want it to be to see in and be something active and engaging. I'd have to take some time to consider how we would present that to you. We'd have to provide that. I, I, I can give you a, a thought on what we don't want. We don't want Maple Road view of Whole Foods. You see it every day. Okay. We don't want Certainly. that. That in this board is verboten. We don't want historically the front of Birmingham Drugs, which is now CVS Part 2. Oh. I, I think it, we could... So, let me that. finish. Sorry. There's more. We don't want the triple nickel facing Big Woodward. Pots and pans. So, go look at those three things. That's what we don't want. That I come up with. I'm sure Robin's got a list that's much longer. But those three are particularly different. Oh. than what we originally anticipated would take place. And in at least one instance, contrary to a representation. Catch my drift? Understood. We don't want a fourth. Because Mr. Ratner has to come back on frequent occasions. And he certainly wouldn't want to carry that baggage around. No, sir. <laughs> Uh, if you would like to talk about the liquor part of this and the operations, <laughs> Mr. Howell is sitting here waiting to yeah, talk I know if you would what? like to. Yeah. That's fine. We should. Sure. Yeah. Good evening, Patrick Howe, uh, 280 North Old Woodward. Um, my role in the project is to apply to the state of Michigan for a liquor license and to work with the police department on their approval of the license. Um, as of today, we've applied to both the police department and the state. The state application is sitting, waiting for the city commission to take action on it. Uh, this is the first application for a special land use permit for a hotel liquor license, per se. Um, we believe we meet all the requirements for transferring a license or applying for a new license, which is the case here, uh, for this hotel. Uh, as you know, there's no quota licenses available in Birmingham. The escrow licenses, to our knowledge, is tied up with four landlords. Um, so we are here applying under the new hotel liquor license ordinance. Um, our plan uh, is to apply for a resort economic development license. The state of Michigan can issue 15 of those per year to projects that are transformative. There are you know, certain investment requirements, uh, hotel room requirements, convention room requirements, and we meet all those state standards. Uh, the license is issued directly from the state of Michigan for this property and this property only. It cannot be transferred anywhere else in the state or the city uh, at any time, and that's state law. Uh, if the hotel changes hands, it can be transferred to a new owner. Uh, we're proposing to uh, make the management group the primary <coughs> license holder. That's a Perriam Hotel group. They will be responsible for the day-to-day -day management um, and to identify the owner as what's called a participation permit holder on the license. They share in the input on the operation of the hotel and they share in the revenue. Um, this hotel is going to be active. We're applying for eight additional bar permits. So notwithstanding the mix-up with the wine bar and the veal, which uh, based on my conversations with the applicant will be programmed at some point, uh, we have... We're looking for a permanent bar in the uh, restaurant lounge area. That will be a typical bar operation. I think in your packet, it's uh, the restaurant is from 9 a.m. to midnight um, is proposed. The uh, lounge area um, is similar hours. The banquets are going to be on a you know as program basis, weddings, corporate functions, etc. There could be an instance where those get, that goes past midnight. Uh, 
so the eight additional bar permits are per portable bars, so they, you know, you could envision there being on a busy night there could be a portable bar for a reception set up in each of the parlors, the reception um, in the wine room, and then a bar in each corner of the banquet facility. So um, it's intended for to be an active use, um, and that's how we're approaching the licensing. Um, the entire hotel would be licensed, so the, not, the 7 a.m. to 2 a.m. operations, that's certainly not the intent, and this is a largely, mostly residential uh, hotel structure, and we're sensitive to noise, et cetera. But if you want to drink at 7 a.m. or 2 a.m. under state law, they could pour it in the bar and take it up to your room. So that's the intent. Uh, with that, I'm happy to answer any questions on licensing uh, components, and I'll defer to the team here with anything else. I'd like to add one more thing before you do, just to, uh, to address the via for a minute. It is in the intent of the owner, who has just confirmed it, <clears throat> that we are planning, hopefully, to have that via activated as a speakeasy with lights, as, it, as we wanted to originally do. It's in our liquor license application. So is outdoor dining. Yeah, we've applied for an outdoor service permit. So we're trying to do that, but it's a development. We have to, it has to evolve and develop so that we can uh, put it in operation the right way. I, I had a question for you, um, and that is uh, from an operating standpoint, um, is the operation is going to be similar to the Detroit Foundation Hotel and the apparatus room in terms of the operating people, uh, not necessarily the same people, but same management company? Is it different? It's the same management company. Um, the programming for the Foundation Hotel is is adapted to suit the audience <laughs> there. Um, we would be more mindful of what we felt um, was appropriate for Birmingham, and we would implement something potentially um, I think it, this is a much more residential setting, so I think it would be, uh, you wouldn't find it had that uh, downtown um, energy. It wouldn't be our desire. My only comment on that. that regard is that the Foundation Hotel and Apparatus Room, which I have frequented, is fabulous. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, while there are differences, uh, I, I think uh, the quality is uh, important. Mm -hmm. It's certainly important to everybody here. Um, and I don't mean by raising the negative views of some of the other places in town to cast aspersions on your plans, but I think you have to understand um, where we're coming, where I'm coming from, which is um, uh, the same group doing a great job in a different environment downtown to bring the same level of excellence here, and secondly, to not have pots and pans in the front window. Um, because you're going to have to come back someday, and if there's a pot and pan in the way, it's going to get ugly. Understood. And thank you. Did I say that okay? I mean, that was kind of nasty, but I'm, I, I really, I think this group has done such a fantastic job on the other, so I'm confident you will do it here, too. Other comments from the board? Questions? Uh, just to get me a little bit more comfortable, when you take this up to the state and they look at this, mm -hmm. are you indicating that the provision of liquor could, in effect, be made available to the public across this floor plan? In other words, the buildings, the the, 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 the room that we originally thought was to be caught the wine bar, which is now called the court of the storage, right? Is that in the state application that you've made? The entire facility would be licensed. The entire facility all, would the, be up, licensed. all the way up to the fifth floor, right. everywhere. So that if 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 if, if the owners and the, and the and the management company felt that there's an opportunity to activate that space, which is currently on the planned storage, you would not need to go back to the state for a change in your license. No. That would no. need to go to get a change in the slot, though. I'm sorry, yeah. Well, that's an interesting point. So they wouldn't. So they would have to come back to us. Yes. Mm -hmm. to so go you back. understand that point? I do. If, if we had one seat, we have to come back and amend the slot. Yeah. So okay. 
I mean, I, we we get that. If, a per, if we're putting a permanent bar in, or you know, any right, substantial right. changes, okay, or we change the name of the restaurant. Oh, so, so, so this is sort of, a, in my way of thinking, a mutual thing. Um, you've heard our concerns about visual, and we know that plans change. And even though you may not have to go back to the state, you're likely to have to come back here. And, and we will pay attention to what goes on. Do they have to, I mean, the plans we approved had a wine bar. Do they have to come back to get a wine bar because? No, because we're going to th theoretically approve these plans tonight in the context of the slop. If there's change in the future, if they have to come back here, they don't necessarily have to go back to the state. I, I think the mix up here is there's not a slop yet. So there have been administrative changes throughout the process. Yes, by the, now we're coming by the department. The Once now the slop is issued. Yep. You can't change it without uh, any minor back. change uh, comes back to this board. All right, okay. just, uh, and I don't want to be the, the guy who just keeps calling, but we've had the, the, the level of changes on this far exceed some of the ones that we're asked to take a peek at. I mean, you know, but this it hasn't been a slump yet. So, but the, it's the, the but city it's been department approved it administratively and never came back here. Yeah, so, I understand that. I mean, that was that's a significant change. To be fair, I don't know that it has been administratively approved along that via. So the, I'll have to research that, but okay. I don't believe it has. Okay, so then because what happens is when we review the building plans that come in for them to start construction, we review all the exterior. In, and if nothing has changed and the door's still in the same place and the windows are in the same place, we would have said, hey, go ahead. But when the final construction is done and we come through for the final inspection, we'll know exactly whether or not it matches the plans. Do they have to do as-built plans? Yes. All right. um, last point, totally different subject. Didn't we approve glass railings now? I think we changed I thought we just that. did that. So couldn't we they? Change that. <laughs> this would be oh, good geez. news. <laughs> I think we I think we just changed this a few months ago. So if they wanted to go it. back to the glass, <laughs> they already bought it probably. <laughs> so if you want them, this is, yeah directed to you. You guys initially proposed glass. I think it's allowed now in our ordinance. <laughs> I think we, we amended the ordinance to allow glass railings in the downtown overlay yes. district. So ownership has expressed concern that it's a maintenance issue, uh -huh. that it's a constant, you always have to keep it clean, and that the metal railing is actually easier for them long term. Okay. All right. So we as architects... We approve the metal, you're good. <laughs> you <know. laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Quit one your head on that one. Uh, <laughs> so just want to make a comment to my board here. I think some of the... Some of the um, Whole Foods and the um, Triple Nickel, um, I'm not defending them, but they're, they're, they're trying to run a business. And businesses come with, those businesses come with a front of the house and back of the house. Um, this space, so I don't remember what was approved, but this space, if you draw a line from that flag across here, that's about the size of that space right there. It's about a garage, and it's a one and a half car garage. Yeah. Small. And it's 60, 70, 80 feet deep into the via. And I'm going to walk past a dead zone because it's the, I think it's the ramp to get you up from the lower level. So there's nothing in the corner. So I can't imagine. So, no, it's, so a, a banquet room needs a place to put the tables and chairs. Now that probably should have been figured out a long time ago. Um, you referenced the Mosheri thing. I'm in the business of being an architect, and I can tell you things change. From when you initially come here, the world is ever changing, and 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 I just I'm just looking at this going. So we're going to force them to go run a business back there in 300 square feet, and no, that's not my point at all. It's but what what so what what we should have seen it. We probably would have approved it, but. They're not all going to be right. changing. But what are we approving tonight? Is it a storage room? Yes. 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 Okay. Absolutely. So a storage room with windows. Yeah. Yeah. That are transparent. Okay. I just, I just. That's what we're approving. Yep. Because I can't imagine you're going to run a business back there. It's not a big wine room. No. Okay. Are there other comments? I think we're done with the intramurals here. Public, want to comment? Is there any public? <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, back to the board. 
what does the board wish to do at 9.57? I can make a motion. Okay. Should I do? Should I take these as two separate motions? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You have to. I have to. Yes. Okay. So the first thing we want to do is. So I'm on page 180. If anyone wants to follow. Special land use permit. So the first thing I'm going to do is the special land use permit. Uh, <coughs> Based on the review of the plan submitted, uh, the board finds that all of the requirements of Article 7, Section 7.27, and Article 7, Section 0.734 have been met, and thus recommends approval to the City Commission of the Special Land Use Permit for 298 South Old Woodward, the Daxton Hotel, with the following conditions. One, the applicant correct all plan sheets for consistency and submit a revised operations plan if required prior to appearing before city commission. I'm leaving that in because we only received it here like this tonight. Two, three, and four are out. And two, three, and four are out. And five, the applicant, uh, two, the applicant provide all signage details to demonstrate compliance with all requirements of the sign ordinance are obtain a variance from the BZA prior to appearing before the City Commission. And three, the applicant comply with the requests of all city departments, especially engineering. Right, Jana? Correct. Yeah. Second. Motion. Second. Uh, any comments from the public on the motion? Back to the board. All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Passed. Now on to uh, site plan. And um, yes. And now I'm just trying to think. I mean, we're approving the revised plans, right? Mm -hmm. We are. So we should say the plans as submitted and as supplemented? Just as supplemented, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because it's not the electronic. Right. I think we should point that out. Okay. Here I go. Uh, based on review of the plan submitted, uh, the planning board finds all of the requirements of Article 7, Section 7.27, and Article 7, Section 0.734 have been met, and thus recommends approval to the City Commission of the final site plan and design review for 298 South Old Woodward, the Daxton Hotel, with the following conditions. Uh, all right. The applicant correct all plan sheets for consistency and submit a revised operations plan if required prior to appearing before the city commission. Number two, the applicant provide all signage details to demonstrate compliance with all the requirements of the sign ordinance or obtain a variance from the BZA prior to appearing before city commission. Number three, the applicant comply with the requests of all city departments. And number four, um, I guess this motion uh, reflects the paper packet we were handed tonight, and not the electronic packet. Is there sure. a better way to say that? Good enough. Good enough. Showing the materials. Sure. So that, yeah, and I think I think that the I think it's important that the paper materials be attached to the motion because we're referencing them specifically. So we would attach them okay. as an exhibit A to the. Right. And, and technically, I think it's not a condition, but I would stick it on and say final site plan based on the yes submission of September 25 attached here to yep. with the following conditions attached here to as exhibit A. Okay. Right? So we'd revise the intro. Yeah. I, I accept that, attorneys. <laughs> Thank you. Is there a second? With on that basis, second. Got that. Mm -hmm. Okay. To the public on the motion. Back to the board. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Any opposed? Unanimous. Unanimous on both counts. Okay. Um, okay. We have a pre app. That, well, on. Uh, Item F3 is being deferred, right? Correct. Um, that one, which was 344, North Old Woodward, 
Um, we did receive a concern or complaint from a resident in that general area that received a notice that the public notice sign was not posted outside and visible from the street. We did send someone out there to confirm that it's correct. It was not posted and visible from the sidewalk. It is the applicant's responsibility to do so, so we did pull it off the agenda given that proper notice was not provided in accordance with the zoning ordinance. Will they be back, I assume? Yes. Send the new notice to the Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, item G, pre-application discussion. Three, 635 Elm Street, the Elmsman. Elmsman. Come on up. Brevity is, would be appreciated. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, may I use your computer to punch this in? Yeah. And then may I be able to direct things from the control tower there? Yeah. Okay, thank you. 635 Elm Street. I know. Intramural cantankerous. Right side against the left. Oh, here's a little. Oh, it does. Trying. We, we had Trying. it. Yeah, no, I'll get it. Check. Okay, just go through so no, no. Not that one again. No, no, no. You, yeah, you hit, the, hit the wrong one again. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, okay, go go where it says Elsman location area. Right. This one? Yeah, then I'm going to go up to so Elsman. No, how about that? Because you can't well, come higher. Okay. No, okay, go. I heard the part of the complaint will say the Okay, you yes. may begin. Introduce yourself. Yes, good evening. Thank you very much. My name is John Marusic, Marusic Architecture, and I'm here uh, to present to you a uh, conceptual pre application um, concept for a mixed use development to be located at the corner of Elm and Bowers in this area here. The um, location of the current uh, Mr. Leonard Ellsman Law Offices. And it, um, so that's the location. I just want to make sure you got an idea of that, where that just is. So I can just be clear, it does not include the parking to the east? No. Okay. What it is here, the right where my lot, red line is, is approximately where the, the property line is. So there's one row of cars? One row of cars on the inside here. Can you so. click the bottom right of that so it, it's full screen? Thank you. Oh, there we go. Thank you very much. Uh, so the, to be a little more yeah. further defined, it's this area right there and to the east, excuse me, to the west. And to the south is the... Uh, and this is the Porsche dealership. dealership. Yes, exactly. So it's, it's this rectangle here. Is the building occupied now? The building is uh, occupied by uh, Mr. Ellsman as a law office. Okay. Okay. So uh, there's quite a few renderings, but I'm just going to jump into and try to get this bigger. Well, maybe not. Okay. Well, we'll do our best. Okay. So we're, we're referring to it as the Ellsman. This is um, Elm Street here looking south, and this is Bowers. This is the corner. 
the southeast corner. So for the most, uh, this is a five-story development. Pardon me, was there a question? I'm oh, sorry. Um, this is a five-story development. Uh, we'll get to some plans. Uh, essentially, what we have here is in the, um, this, this is a zone MU3, which allows us to go to 66 feet. And in order to accommodate that extra height, we have to um, be leads and residential, which we will be accommodating to do so. To the to the west across the street is a two-story building. The T-Mobile. The T-Mobile. Yeah. yeah. Yes, it's a two-story building. Thank you. So here's just a collage of a couple other views. Um, uh, looking down at at the corner, Elm and Bowers. This is the um, uh, towards the rear where the service entrance is located, and then this uh, gives an idea of how the uh, parking would be facilitated access to the project. This is uh, Bowers Street right here, and Elm's on the side over there. So to run through it very quickly here, um, this is our basement parking plan. We have to have one uh, level of underground parking. This is our first level plan, which uh, accommodates uh, the uh, required retail component along uh, Elm Street. Uh, here's our entry off of Bowers. Uh, here's the entry to the uh, parking to the rear, as well as to the ramp that accommodates parking to the lower level. And here's our loading dock area, as well as mechanical room provisions. When you say first floor plan, that this yeah. first level plan. This is a street level. The street level. Mm -hmm. Building that stuff. This gives a little more graphic yeah. um, clarification. We have approximately 2,000, 2,100 square feet of uh, retail there, and I'll get into a parking. But I want to run through. Uh, <coughs> Essentially, there's 21 units on this development here on levels two and level three. We have six, two bedrooms in the corners and one bedroom inside. The one bedrooms are approximately 1,000 square feet, and the other uh, two bedrooms are approximately 17, 1,800 square feet. That's pretty big. And that's the same for the third floor. We have a step back on the fourth floor, which accommodates a walkout terrace facing the west, and that will be divided between two units here. The uh, th uh, three units on the side are the similar units on the third and second floors. What's we the square footage of those units? Oh, I see them. Up. They're off to the side here. I, I, don't, I can't read them from here. Yeah, one of them's, yeah, okay. Uh, this again is about 1,800 square feet. This is similar square footage, because but we're reduced by the uh, walkout terrace. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. And it, these are actually three bedrooms here. <coughs> this is, oh, this one is three bedrooms. And then the top floor, which is its, uh, the second step back. This is the our primo, as I call it. Um, um, penthouse accommodation, which is to the full length of the uh, west side of the building. And again, the similar um, footprint of the three units uh, up to facing the east. This is just a breakdown, again, uh, we don't have to linger here, of each of these units. Are these rentals or condominiums? These currently are going to be regarded as condominiums. 21 units of condominiums. So I, you know, we can go through this, but I don't want, I don't think it's necessary for the sake of it. How many parking spaces? Go through a few stats here. Get back to all of the. We have 21 units. We're accommodating 1.5 parking spaces per unit. That's our proposed. Uh, we have 2,100 square feet of retail, and we have seven spaces required for that. Currently in our plan, um, we have five spaces on the street, which will contribute to the parking overall. Here, here, and three here, that's five. We're actually planning these two to be the, uh, the other, uh, to accommodate the uh, required parking for the retail. Um, we have Total parking of, on Elm? There is currently parking on Elm here. Well, actually what it is is a parking space here now and one on the other side and the drive to um, <coughs> the facilities in the center here, but we would be shifting that over. Okay. 
So we have 21 units, 31.5 parking spaces uh, per 1.5. So essentially, we're probably providing 1.62 parking spaces. We have enough uh, parking based upon this to facilitate the uh, uh, what we feel is the required retail. We are um, do have um, glass balconies. I'm glad we had a conversation prior to this. That restriction was only in the downtown overlay. I know that, but um, I'm kind of glad we're going that way. Okay, but, <laughs> but nonetheless, we have got glass balconies, as you can see, and we have seven foot sidewalk for the code requirement for the um, downtown uh, triangle or the, the triangle district so again um, what we're here to do is, is to show you uh, what we have uh, we, you know we're going to meet the glass um, you know storefront regulation requirement as to the parking sure how many cars exterior and how many inside or underneath first floor we have um, there'll be five parking spaces to the outside and um, 30 six spaces on the interior 41 spaces on the interior 41 excuse me 36 over two floors mm -hmm. two floors yes it's a very tight space only 12,500 square feet so we're packing a lot into a small little package can you show us the first floor plan sure the um the first floor <coughs> street level and correct and this yeah. that's a little more correct Mm -hmm. Can make it a dog kennel would be better. Would the uh, law offices uh, <laughs> still be there? Absolutely not. No. We'll be removing a significant uh, <laughs> old building that won't be. Okay, what, what's visible from Elm? Do you have a view? Uh, what's visible from Elm? From um, yeah, you got an angle, but I, I didn't see a straight shot. Yeah, okay. Well, it, it, it's a glass storefront. Uh, let's see. Is that where the retail is? Yes, right along, the, there... right along the edge here is, 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 a, is a retail. And then, then here's our entry lobby, so it wraps around. So that wraps around. And then we have uh, our entry uh, parking. parking here, and then uh, we propose to have an open stairwell for the... Uh, Where's the elevator? Inside. Right, right here. Right there? Okay. Yeah. And is that a green roof, or is that just the way it shows up? Well, the terraces um, show up as, well, okay. I always like to, to push the green roof, okay? So uh, I'm going to say a green roof, okay? Right now it's a uh, huh. green roof. And part of the reason why a uh, green roof, and I've been at one of your previous uh, meetings before, where, you know, that's, our, that's the outdoor space in the urban environment. That's the recreational space in the urban environment. So to provide a, a green roof opportunity in this particular case, um, as well as I think most cases in any type of urban development, is a, 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 an amenity feature that uh, becomes, uh, you know, that recreational space. There's balconies here, as you can see, we've fully accommodated very, very spacious balconies. We feel that's going to be a very significant feature. Um, I think that you'll see that as you compare this to the other developments in the uh, city, um, we have probably more balcony opportunity than most, if not all. And part of that is to make, a, we'll call it a, a bigger, better mousetrap. Does, do the balconies extend over the sidewalks? I was waiting for that question. <laughs> yes, they do. Okay, they extend out six feet. We're um, uh, we right now they extend out six feet. We might retract them back to five. But right now they're six feet, and the lower balcony is uh, approximately sixteen feet above the um, street. Okay, so when we did change the ordinance to allow glass railings downtown, we also, not on the same night, but recently changed the ordinance to deal with projections into the right-of-way for the airspace at grade and below. So that would require special approval from the city commission. Is there a particular ordinance um, yes. language now yes. that states that? Yes. You can't cite it right now. For I a, can't cite it word uh, for word right now. No. All right. Well, we'll look that up. We were hoping to get ahead of the, uh, the the curve on that one. I know that was going someplace. Yeah. Well. All right. So essentially, been here two years ago, you might have slid through. We might also mention there's been a lot of changes on rooftop too. Correct. Yeah. On okay. So you then could you could you rooftop uses are allowed. Mm -hmm. Yep. But you can pop an elevator up onto the roof and so on. Now. Well, okay. So that's in the plus column. Is that what mm -hmm. we're talking about? That's here? in okay. the plus column. Right. I would say. Okay. But well, we we have to work on this. Um, projection the projections in the, the right of right way, way are are quite constrained mm -hmm. now, uh, and there's a detailed approval process depending on how far you're trying to project. Okay. 
Yeah. Well, thank you. It's just a comment. I mean, there's a reason we changed the ordinance, and so it's not just like, hey, go to city commission and get it approved. It's, you know, you're encroaching visually into that right away. It's mm -hmm. people living out in the right away. Um, people having furniture out in the right away that you can't visually control. So there's a lot of a lot of concerns there. All right. Well, we'll research that, and but we'll. I have a question. That the sure. units are. Is it is it um, so parking dictates the number of yep. units? Yes. Would your preference? Would, you know, not that we could do it, but if um, wh where's where's the demand in terms of unit size? You seem large. To sure. Me. Well, I think that just in a, empirically. Evidence states that the larger units are necessarily the ones that are moving as quick or as the are not, are not are moving. Not. Yes, are not moving it's quick. A big unit. There's some what, 1,800 square feet. I don't think is a. It's, it's a larger two-bedroom unit, but it's not. It's it's a, a, a good point there. I just um, dealing with a project in Royal Oak, and we're dealing with 14 to 1,600 square foot two-bedroom units. And so this is a, just a little more upscale accommodating to a two-bedroom element, a 1,000 square foot one-bedroom unit. Um, it's Birmingham. It's, isn't the city investigating? Thank you very much. It's Birmingham, OK. <laughs> isn't the city investigating or doing a study on parking requirements for residential? And well, it's part of the master plan discussion. <clears throat> I haven't changed now. <laughs> so you're looking for reaction? Well, um, um, uh, here's our presentation. Um, I got a couple yeah. bits of well, input here. I got to tell you, a dog kennel would be better than what's there now. So, uh, a dog kennel would be what? <laughs> better than what's there now. Oh, okay. Thank you very much. I thought you were making so, comparative. <laughs> <laughs> so, no. I, well, you know, I, I think we can we can deal. You, you're going to have to deal with the balcony issue. Um, I think it's the kind of development in this area that. We need, you know, more housing um, in the Triangle area. Right, the one thing you may want to look at is my recollection is that at 750 Forest, mm -hmm. that it's their smaller and mid-sized units that sold more quickly. Yes. Right. Um, which were a little smaller than your yes. two bedrooms, as I, I recall. And certainly from my perspective, you know, a smaller, a little bit smaller unit with a little bit lower price point uh, would be... I couldn't agree with you more, and I think that Mr. Boyle, on, on earlier occasions, my, my being here, made comments on the desire. The problem is meeting this. If therefore you want with more units, you got a parking problem. There you go. Thank you very much. I mean, uh, and and that I mean, your parking requirement has, I think, uh, evolved. I think very constructively, and for how uh, the market should be met. Um, I'm doing projects in Detroit, and uh, if you're within a quarter mile of Woodward Avenue, uh, parking requirements 0.75 parking spaces per unit. And so you're able to get those beautiful um, 700, 600 square foot units that I know you would love to have here. I have a developer that I've been trying to work with on a project who wants to, we've been trying to do projects in Birmingham, haven't found one that fit, that would love to be able to accommodate that type of uh, action of uh, uh, unit. I mean, he really does, and he sees the market being here for that. It's that parking requirement that puts the kibosh on things. This is underground parking. I mean, that is a premium cost in a very small area footprint. And um, it's tough. It's tough. So, you know, if we could um, get something tighter, I mean, the, then it would be easier to, to accommodate that. This right here is, is I, I think, one of the best we can go for what we got. And, uh, you know, or what that is right now, but if I could get in a, um, uh, a seven, eight hundred square foot one bedroom and a twelve to thirteen hundred square foot two bedroom, I think that's what you're looking for. I think that's what the market's looking for here, and there isn't that type of availability. We're getting there. You'll see something pretty soon, I think. Hopefully, we'll see a parking structure in this district. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. There you go. Well, uh, good. I think you have our thoughts. <coughs> Positive. Okay. Well, thank you very much, and I appreciate um, you know the, about the balcony and, and some of the other things, especially the green roof. And thank you very much. Thank you. Did you? Is there any future development on closing off Elm Street after they made or yeah Elm on that corner there? I mean, I know that no, no recent discussion now. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's my cut. <laughs> <laughs> Shh, quiet.
Okay. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Well, good luck. Yeah. We'll see you again, hopefully. Hopefully. A couple of months. Um, okay. Okay. Um, we're on to miscellaneous communications, joint meeting with city commission, which we talked about. A major item on the agenda is going to be the master plan, right? Correct. Thursday, October 17th at a location to be determined. Correct. Mr. Chairman, I, could, could I just urge that we find a location that has good projection facility? Okay. Yeah. I'll pass that on. Okay. Uh, administrative approval, correspondence, any? There was one in there, but it was one we had talked about before. Yep. Uh, the parking lot up there. Okay, let's talk Brooklyn. about the agenda for a month from now. Brooklyn Pizza, their bistro slup application is in. 344 North Ooh. Old Woodward, which is the one that the, the noticing was not correct on this one month. They'll be back. Um, Jack's Car Wash, we postponed them to come mm -hmm. back on October 23rd for their revisions. And depending on if there's room, I'm not really sure at this point yet, maybe 469 to 479 South Old Woodward. What's that? Mountain King. Oh, oh. <laughs> I'll bring backpacks. <laughs> wow. <laughs> to come back for a five story building. Wow. Okay. Oh. Good. Does that change your dental appointment? Uh, <laughs> I'm in such a state of shock. I don't know whether I'm going to go to the dentist or uh, maybe the cardiologist <laughs> instead. Okay. Um, anything else? Nope. Anything on I? Nope. Anything else? Meeting adjourned. <laughs>